Alrighty, hello, hello everybody. Hope you're doing well today and hope you're ready for take, not take two, episode two, stream two, day two of the gold scale kobolds. We have to find our dragon god slash dad slash friend. I don't know. I, like we kind of, I guess we view him as like a god. I, I suppose that's fair. Uh, but we got to find him. Okay. But we did have a little bit of a kerfuffle with the command yesterday at the end of the stream. Uh, we did win the war. So that's pretty good. Uh, we were able to take like four provinces, I think. Yippee. Four provinces and a some war reps for 60 war score. Wow. Huge. Massive. We love it. Yeah, we love fighting the command. Uh, so now we need to quickly expand and take out our neighbors before the next command war starts. The only problem is we have no manpower and our allies will not help us. Uh, we do have some mercenaries. That's what I'm looking for. We have mercenaries so we can use those hopefully to fight. The problem is we need to fight Ajakuma we need to fight Beyond Fang. Beyond, or Ashikuma is guaranteed by Guamid, so I have to fight Guamid, which we know we can beat them. It's just a matter of I have no manpower, and I have to sit on some forts for a pretty long time to fight Ashikuma. So it's going to be kind of difficult to make that work. And then number two is Beyond Fang, who's allied with a whole bunch of other people. So we're just going to have to play it by ear and see how we go. Uh, hello, Morton Solace, Nurkor. Okay, super PLP. Uh, Polaris, North Star, Fallen Hearts, good to see ya. Ellie, hello. Do, 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 do. Rafa, hello. And Valencia, I hope you're doing well. <clears throat> uh, didn't get six to cut off command from Beyond Fang, though. True. We did not get all the provinces to cut them off from Beyond Fang, which is unfortunate. But as, as long as we go to war with Beyond Fang before the command does, it shouldn't be a big deal. But yes, Ashtakuma and Guamid, I need land off of for our mission tree. And then Beyond Fang, I need land off of so I can live. Both things, very important. Very important. Uh, Beyond Fang's prowess has a prince command from eating your Yanshin. Yeah, we definitely don't want them eating our Yanshin. That would be very bad. Uh, eventually, I think we get a CB to dismantle the command. I said I was going to look into the mission tree. I lied. I didn't look at all. Not even for a second. Uh, so we'll figure it out. Uh, we've updated to the recent version of the Bitbucket. Uh, thank you, Ellie, for pointing out that the Kobold lifespan increase was not in yet as of yesterday, but it is now. So our little bolds should live longer. Um, I don't know exactly how that affects generals. Like, does that mean that the general death chance doesn't increase as fast if you're longer lived? Or does it mean it doesn't affect it at all? Or does it actually not really matter in any way? I don't know. But we'll see. Generals are the same across all... Okay, so they're the same across all races. So does that mean... They live on average of 25 years. So on average, they should live 25 years, no matter how old they are when you recruit them? Is that what you're... You're saying? Uh... Chris... Chris... Suser. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, Admiral. Correct? Okay. Well, that's good. So 25 years of average. Not bad. General age doesn't affect lifespan. Gotcha. 25 on army, average of 50 when not on army. Ooh, so they have a higher chance to die when on it. Gotcha, okay. Uh, finally able to catch your stream? Well, welcome in. Welcome in to the Gold Bolt stream. Can I drill in removing generals is good now? Okay, well that's good. That's good to know. Yeah, we are unfortunately a theocracy, which is bad. <laughs> I, I, I don't like playing theocracies. Uh, mostly because you can't control your ruler stats in any way, like, which is kind of the most important part of the game, but it's fine. We'll figure it out. Uh, who needs monarch points, right? Who needs monarch points? Watch some of your VODs on YouTube. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, also, all the Tellum VODs, they're up. The Quika VOD, it's up. Yesterday's Balwar Jin VOD, it's up. We are so back. You know what's not Theo? Lake Fed. That's true. At least you get reform progress growth. That's true. That's true, I guess. Looking at the positive. You know who else gives us reform progress growth, though? Republics. <laughs> and you know what you can do as republics? Choose your monarch points. Yeah. Yeah. But it's fine. He's only a 340 and a 113. <laughs> Doxy gets growth from Devotion, I think. 
Uh, yeah, but still, I'd rather have more monarch points than more government reform progress. But it's fine. We'll see how it goes. We're just going to have to have high-level advisors, I think, in order to afford everything. And I think we're going to keep this discipline advisor. He is half price. No, he's not. He's not half price. It's just off because it's abundance of military advisors, I guess. I could hire in this land maintenance guy and get two mil a month. Which is somewhat tempting. Like, we're super far behind on our mil tech at this point. Luckily, our neighbors are also behind. How much debt? Uh, it's just 1% loans, which isn't too bad. So, 550 ducats. It's not a big deal. We'll be able to pay it off. Now, before I declare this next war, I should probably seize my crown land. Get up to 25. Also, I need to build a spy network here. Uh, hey, King Mike, how you doing? Yeah, 1.5% loans is rough, so we definitely don't want to take any other loans if we can help it. But we needed the loans to get through the command war. Could we have gotten away with just taking, like, two regular loans? Maybe, but we'd probably be paying more interest if we did that. Uh, Buvari was at one point friendly with us. They are now not friendly with us, so that's cool. Appreciate that. You're walking back, and we're bringing our mercs back. So our two options is to fight Ashikuma. Which is 50,000 troops. Could call in Kohai, but Kohai is kind of a non-factor. Or we can go fight Beyond Fang, who is also a lot of troops. But, if I set up correctly, I can get all of these guys out. I can get their allies out of the war very quickly if I'm in the right spot to do so. The Bird Riders are Tech 5. Like it, It's not that we can't beat the Bird Riders. That's not the problem. The problem is I have to sit here on this hill fort for a while because it's 90% defensiveness. And even if they're behind on tech and I have no manpower, that's going to be very difficult for me to take even, even, even if we could kill their troops rather easily. That's what my main concern is. Uh, Rajdu and Rajdu collapse and instantly expand like crazy. Yeah. You can invade Bird Riders first, break guarantee, then invade Oni. I have a truce. I've got a truce with them for another seven years. Because we did our war with Lan Shen Wei, where we forced Lan Shen Wei to attack them. So that wouldn't work either, unfortunately. Um. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I was like, what do you mean you're at 10? You're at max trust. There is no world in which you should want my provinces. No world. Yeah, I think that's the plan. We go over here. We can wipe Zong Ji's troops. Leave one troop here. Walk down. Try and wipe out Fight Ten in time. The problem is with Zion coming in, uh, they could just walk north towards my provinces. But if I can get them full occupied, I can just white piece them out. Uh, thank you for the raid yesterday. That's the most you ever had. Well, I hope your stream went well. You are welcome. Uh, I remember turning Mythical Conqueror on, and then my map revealed Holest, and I was like, hell no, I'm not going close, because a big command. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'd be like that. Could establish a Golden Tongue headquarters, apparently, for 100 Diplo points. Oh, right, because I... I annexed my vassal. Are we still converting down here? Yes, we... Are? Question mark? Oh, right, no, I don't need to convert it. I don't need to. It's our thing. It's incorrect faith. We don't need to. Uh, do Kobold Pop Majority still give hostile attrition? Yes, it's two. Kobold Pops give... Uh, oh, wait, no, it's plus one? If it's a large, does it go to plus two? That might be it. But it is there. So if you stack Haramari and Kobolds in one, one province, you can get a lot of attrition that way. Okay, I think we're going to have to be on Fang first. We do need to unpause to let our troops come back. Young Lucy is going to die. 
Yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that one. I forgot he was just going to immediately warn me again. Because you can warn nations while you have a truce? Doesn't really make sense to me, but okay. Why are you allowed to warn nations you have a truce with? I don't know. That kind of feels... Dumb? That does mean that I can't do my whole plan of getting over here and instantly wiping them. So this will be fun. We'll bring Kohai in mostly because they'll just go siege down Kohai and leave me alone. Haha, <laughs> bozo. Now, I say bozo. Uh, I still have to kill these guys. So, I'm not sure how we're going to do that now. It may just be that we have to somehow fight the command. Uh, somehow. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I do have rebels that want to rise up. Oh, casual 29,000 peasants, huh? Okay. You go ahead and build a spy network here. We're going to full consolidate you down. I really don't like that you can warn people when you have a truce. Am I crazy, guys? Is this streamer being weird moment? Am I just complaining to complain? It just feels weird that you can warn someone when you have a truce. Like, you can't declare war on them, but you can't just stop them from declaring war? I don't know. Like, the warning mechanic, yeah, sure, it's annoying, but it's fine. It makes sense, but I don't know. Hey, get back here. Where are you going? Why are you running? I don't know. Not my problem, though. He left. See ya, bozo. So, Fight 10 has no troops. Just no CB if they break the warning. No CB truce break. Ah, oh, yes. We love our no CB truce breaks. Okay, you're gonna go down here. Give me four troops. I don't know. I don't know. There's our 30,000 peasants that just rose up. We'll deal with them. Who do we have access to? Okay, there's no access to these guys. Yeah, they're going to step onto my forts. I don't particularly care. But fight it. Oh, they have 2,000 troops. No! All my hard work gone wasted useless they might still peace out yep all right give me your war reps break your alliance with beyond fang and louis yip honestly because i can just kill louis yip yeah i can just kill louis yip um give me your money thank you Awful my vassal access. You mean my ally? They have 18,000 troops. I don't think they're going to go fight this many. That would be a pretty unreasonable thing for me to expect. And they would find a way to lose. We all know that they would. We've seen the evidence. They would find a way to lose. <laughs> Wait. Oh, he didn't get wiped. No. No. I can't piece this guy out, though. I want you to break your alliance with Tian Lu, with Beyond Fang. You can keep your alliance with Xin Young, though. Thank you. Because now I can tell my my ally to attack Zhong Ji. And he can annex him so we can complete the mission faster. Uh, hey, Barley Bread. Allies is a vassal with an open relationship. That's true. That's true. AI allies are just future vassals or targets of war. It's just the way it is. I've improved with Bruvari. He's back to being friendly. Again, I'd love to ally you, man. Here's the thing. I know you're going to be a punk about it. That will get automatically unseaged. Okay. 
So we go hit this Beyond Fang army first. I apparently can take an idea, but I can't actually take the idea. Coward. Coward, coward, coward. Stay, fight, and die. Alright, let's go after... This province is a three siege general. Let's get you there. Put the two siege general right there. An army career. I will take that 15 army tradition. Thank you. We will grab the war goal and we will start sieging. Now it's mostly just our cannons that are on the siege. So hopefully once this is occupied, we can start getting our manpower back a little bit. Uh, switch to half cost trader because done annexing. Do I have a host? I do have a half cost trader. You're right. Thank you. Oh, also, I can switch back over to maximizing profit. Because I had that on improved relations. With increased province location, can I hope you 5 will do occupation like Imperator did? Yeah, I mean... Yeah. I would like you to be able to take less in wars, personally. But I think you could take too much land in Imperator per war. But hey, that's just me. That's just me. All right, we're just going to keep looting all this. And we will go ahead and pay off all of our loans. We do not need them. I mean occupation? I pray. I pray for the day that in the EU 5 that I don't have to full occupy a country to finish a war. I pray. I pray that I don't have to siege down the entirety of the command to take one province from them. You would have to overhaul how the war score system works and how you take land, but oh my goodness, do I hate having to siege down countries in their entirety. If you can siege down a country in their entirety, you should just take the whole country. Come on. PX and have as much content as E5 at launch as E4 hats. I don't know how they plan to do this. I don't either. Uh, best of luck to them, though. I hope they succeed. But I also don't know how they plan to do that. E5 will hurt more, a bit more with PC with the pop system and ship to more provinces. From what I understand, they're not... And again, I don't know anything. Uh, they're not modeling pops like Vicky 3 pops. It's not like there's individual little people that they keep track of. It's more groupings of people the reason why victoria 3 gets so so laggy is because it's tracking every single pop and every single demand and how it changes every single like week or day or whatever it is i don't think that's what they're doing no i don't think it's like stellaris pops either because stellaris pops while they don't individually track things they do still cause performance issues because they are they're always looking where they can migrate to. Uh, I can get a cheaper artist possibly from this. I don't need a cheaper artist though. Let's get more tolerance. Okay. Vassal is not a vassal. It's an ally. They broke our alliance with them, which is good. I don't need to be allied with them, to be honest with you. Uh, can I just show the performance of Imperial late game? It seems to slow down immensely. Yeah. I mean, it's not as bad as Vicky, I will say that. Vicky 3, at least. But there is definitely a slowdown. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know about game design and game performance. Where are you going? I said go here. Game performance to, to know why certain games are more productive. But what it seems like is they're not doing the Vicky 3 pop system, so... It's not going to go as in-depth on the tracking. Mostly because it doesn't need to. Like, without industrialization, there's really no reason to check all the pops needs all the time. It's kind of redundant. Not kind of. It is redundant. You don't need to do that. It's why I'm interesting to learn more about the literacy mechanics. Because most of the world wasn't literate at that point. So what do they actually mean by literacy? Are they going to track, like noble and burger and clergy literacy and how does that play into tech 
Because we know that they're going to have... Oh, well, obviously going to have technology, right? We don't know how that's going to be shaped. This doesn't matter a lot for Reformation. That's true, but there is also an entire world out there that doesn't deal with the Reformation. Right? And there's also going to be probably, like, at least 150, 200 years before you really get into the Reformation. So, you know, what else does it tie into other than just that? This game isn't World Universalis 5. Uh, true, but it's also not only in Europe. Yes? If you make a game for only Europe, then you just have Europe on the map. And I hate to tell you this. There are other people outside of Europe. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's wild. They're out there. <laughs> you need places to colonize. Well, why didn't the Europeans simply colonize themselves, okay? I'm asking the real questions in here. <laughs> I'm not saying that literacy won't be important for the Reformation. I'm just saying that if you're going to make a game mechanic that does interact with the rest of the world, it damn well better interact with the rest of the world, you know? We did. Damn. L Irish, I guess. Rippy dippy. <laughs> I'll just point it out though. Some of Ireland is free, all right. I'm just saying, some of it, some of it broke out. We're gonna get the third dragon dance. Oh right, I have to own Xiao Dou. A uh, new set of rules have been put in place for this dance to prevent a repeat of last time, and it's clearly working. The fight is noticeably less vicious, and as such, has drunk considerably less visitors than last time. I really like the Kindled Scale Clan. I really do. It, like, Fort Maintenance Reduction and less shock damage received is just so nice for us. Hard to beat it. Hope Pop Groups and to make culture conversion more obvious what you're doing, less clean feeling. I hope you don't even have the option to culture convert or religious convert. That's my hot take. I don't even think you should be able to touch that. I think you should be able to set your country up to encourage that. I think you should be able to have laws that might encourage that. But I don't think the player should at any point be able to go, okay, I'm going to spend money and convert this province in seven months. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous, and it just leads to more blobbing. Because there is no downside to expanding an EU4, and I hope there is a downside to expanding the EU5. Right, at least short term. You have to look at long term gains versus short term games gains, and I hope that that is something that matters. They won't, I know, but I can hope. I can dream. <laughs> DLC for automatic conversion. <laughs> true, 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 true. Alright, what's our peace deal here? Want this. Want this. I could release a vassal. Zuzyut. Wouldn't be a terrible vassal to grab. So I grab all this stuff. And then I release Zuzyut. What about culture conversion by sword? Yeah, how are you going to put that in a game though? Like, how are you going to make that into a mechanic that works? Still over the command? Yeah, I know. Let's pray it was just like any time until they rework the religion conversion system be more like what you're hoping. Yeah, I would like something more akin to Imperator. It's still too fast for my taste though. It It really doesn't take that long to convert people in Imperator. Cultural conversion can take a while, I suppose, but religious conversion still happens so fast. It's so fast. Like <laughs> people just drop their religion in a matter of years, an entire province will be converted. But I do like that direction that it goes in. Okay, you move there. But to be fair, I'm also someone who would like more leaning into the simulation. Not necessarily less things for the player to do. I don't want to just sit there and watch the game. But I do want less... 
I don't know. I don't know if direct control is the correct term I'm looking for. I want less the god powers. I guess is what I'm actually trying to say. Like like the difference between Door Fortress and Rimworld, right? Rimworld, you control everything your little guys do. You know, you tell them what to do. They do what you say. When you tell them to do something, they go do it directly. In Door Fortress, you like shape your dwarves to go and do things, but you can't directly say for them to go and do a specific job except for the military, which ironically also fits into this example. Uh, I don't need the two provinces. We're, we're good. I don't need these. I don't care. I just want this mountain fort. That's what I want. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it'd be more interesting for myself if you had... If it was more about shaping your country than controlling every aspect of your country, if that makes sense. Give me a little bit of money. That doesn't matter. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Let's go ahead and release the two shots. As a vassal. We can summon the diet, seize land. Overextension less than one. I can do that. Oh boy. We sure are overextended, folks. We sure are overextended. Uh, it's peacetime. And Poe said, let there be peace. And there will be. I can't go to war with... Ashikuma right now. We're gonna have to have another command war before we fight Ashikuma. Just fun. Uh, you drill, you will deal with rebels. Thank you very much. Why are you on my border? You don't belong on my border. You got nothing to do over here. Go away. But using your vassal expand? Yeah, we could do that. My only problem is I have really high war exhaustion. Speaking of which, I'm going to get rid of martial arts for the peasantry for right now. And I'm going to... Grab... Do, 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 do. This monthly war exhaustion reduction. And I'm going to get rid of that immediately. <laughs> uh, Hun Shui revolts. The loyal subjects of Paul Regine have long carried the enormous burden of the Golden Sage's constant wars without complaining. These days are now over. Since Fax Cheza, the first doesn't seem to listen to reason, the people of Hun Shui decided to try saber rattling. How many of these do you think are going to rise up? Oh no, it's one of four options. Let's go 16,000 peasants. 16,000 nobles. Are you going to be scared to engage them? Yeah, you are. Coward. He probably moves on to this fort, though, so I don't necessarily need to fight him. Oh, there we go. You'll walk over. You'll unsiege it. Hey, what the f What do they mean by this? Is this like an event you get when you have over like five war exhaustion? What the heck? What the heck? Like we're at peace. It's probably the 100% OE. Mm, maybe. It's also a good point. Uh, give one province to Vassal? No. I refuse. That's not just me being stubborn. There is actually a good reason. I need to make sure that these forts actually work. Which means I need one province of mine to be... I need my land connected to the command to be one province deep, if that makes sense. So I, I could give this out, but I own this whole state, so... I'd rather just deal with the events, honestly. It's not a huge deal. 
It's like, these guys have cavalry? The noble rebels do? I guess we have cav now that we're level 5. Or tech 6. But they're not very good. So I'm not that worried about it. Competent diplomacy. Nice. Improve relations. Go ahead and start drilling. I need to get our professionalism back up. Please and thank you. Oh, uh, he's going to give my vassal a core on me. That's unfortunate. Uh, we can be improving with him. So let's do that. Now he's going to demand it like 15,000 times. Even after I say no, he's going to be like, no, I demand it. It's mine. Give it. These kobolds, really bad diplomacy like Drancos? Nope. We are much better at it now. Balrajin Moon. Okay, just give me the mill power. Thank you. Okay, take the mill tech. You are on this mountain. So yeah, we're going to need to build two more forts. We're going to need one. Oh, they might be able to walk through this fort. Shoot. I'll build it anyways. But they might be able to walk through it. Uh, is there another race that excels at attrition warfare? No, I'd say kobolds are still the best. Simply because you can have more kobolds everywhere. The the trick is you just have a kobold only nation. Like you get rid of everybody else and you just have kobolds. That doesn't work for us here because we rely on all the humies around us. But for like the Dragon Coast kobolds. You just he who. Yeah, and you do get it back with your reform. Uh, I will pay the money to gain the development. Thank you. And what is our current force limit? 39. Let's build another troop. We are going to want to fire these mercs at some point. Uh, yes, but before I do that, I forgot to ally him. I might have been able to get the alliance. It's unfortunate. Let me just eye the Raj. He stopped wanting to have the command war ended. Yeah, but he got back to friendly again. And I lost it again. Is Hedarion still alive? Oh yeah, he's... Wait a second. Wait a second. Is Hedarion always a powerful mage? I don't remember a powerful mage Hedarion. You lucky son of a gun. No wonder why he's still alive. Elves, man. Elves. Okay, so you're gonna go siege down the ally. I do want to keep drilling these troops, is the thing. Counterpoint. Going and looting would be pretty nice. Oh. I'm getting war exhaustion for the attrition of mercs? Come on, man. They're not even my troops. I'm going to want to full state this stuff up. But I think it's more important that I grab this idea group. And... What pairs well with defensive from Diplo ideas? Like Diplo groups. Espionage gives fort defense. Court gives less morale damage received. I mean, ooh. Is there a way in Ambinar to stack morale damage received reductions? There might be at this point. Influence gives monthly war exhaustion and garrison army damage. Can you take a second mail day? Yeah, it's a game rule. A game rule that more often than not hurts me because I still take it in a 3-3-3 because it almost always makes sense to do that. Or a 1-1-1, right? One mil to one diplo to one admin. 
But the AI more often just takes a bunch of mill ideas. Like, I'd rather take something like religious or infrastructure. Infrastructure would be huge for the attrition for enemies. We can get back to the way we're supposed to be. <laughs> the way kobolds were meant to be. But we need economic as well. But I don't have a bunch of admin points is the problem. And we're behind on admin tech. And we're going to need that governing capacity. Uh, hey, Sarah. How are you doing? Then you only take max half mil ideas. It's a, it's a setting that you can change. Ask Jin Bin Rong for the land of your vassal. Ooh, true. He's at war and I'm at war, so I can't do that. But after the war, we can try. You do have 56 favors. We can get it back. Uh, huge court ideas play. I mean, I do think we take influence here. We're going to need influence if we ever want to annex Lin Chen Hui at any point. Uh, bring us a good fortune. Since time immemorial, the people of Yanchen have treasured golden kobold scales as glittering good luck charms. Many a foreign dignitary has summited the mountains of Ball Risen to acquire them, bearing extravagant gifts in exchange and return. It was only a matter of time before the kobolds themselves began to adorn the highest courts in the land. As a living portent of good fortune, gold-scale kobolds are honored guests of Yanshin's elite. Plus two diplomat. Uh, you're in pain. Nocturnal because I got a night shift at work. Oof. That is a rough transition. For sure. Uh, different between crafting golden tongue ideas influence itself. True. Mount South is occupied. True. Stop drilling. We've got some humans to take care of. Take him out, please. Thank you. Move you back to the fort so I can... Get back to drilling. No, you're not... Oh, he's... In... No, he's still guaranteeing them. We're gonna have to fight the command again in order to break that. There's just no other way. I'll take that stability. Thank you. Get back up to three stab. Can at least half state this stuff. Askeray's gonna die to the command. I just. Uvari, man, homie, he's friendly. Do it. There it is. All right, so we're allied with Buvari. I don't actually know if I'd want him to join my war against the command, though, is the thing. Because it'd be based off of war score from battles, and I don't trust the AI. But it would be a good way to waste down the command's manpower and distract his troops. Are you really struggling that much over here? Just sit down and siege a fort. It's not that difficult. Why are you so dumb? I don't get it. You're only at war with Tianlu. Where are you going? He's trying to chase his army down. Dog. Oh, my troops are in, in for a rough time. I don't understand why the AI is like this. Just like sit there and siege. It's not that difficult. It's really, really not. Take my prestige. I would really like to grab this morale of armies before we fight the command again. Did I just say my truce with the command was up? Uh oh. No. My spider worker got, got caught. 
Okay, well, I'm just gonna make some claims on them. Not that I need them, but might as well. I should go fight this guy soon, TM. Wait, they remove the cores of these vassals automatically? Really? Well, that's sad. Well, let's start building a spy network so we can take it. Again, I'm not in love with going up there and taking land, but... How much of Gozen Gun are you going to take? I, I don't even know the words you're saying right now. I don't even know what you mean by that. <laughs> An occupation ally? True. Why am I... Oh, Lanshin Hui. Why are you like this, man? You only need one ally. It's me. Trust me, I will defend you. Each and every time. Yes, I will gladly spread the institution to Buvari. The thing is, I know that the moment that I leave this area, the AI is going to do something dumb. And then it's going to be even more time that I'm in this war that I don't want to be. Is the subcontinent formerly known as North Hales? Ooh. Ooh. Vim de Trong, Rahin, Yanchen, in Gosen Gun. I like that. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Preferably, none of it. But realistically, I've got to take some of it. Because I need this land in here. So, uh, easy way to do that is just to cut up and take it. The valley is now Nam Siulan. Okay. I like that they have uh, unique names. Did the valley have a different name before? Did it even have a name? You conquer the valley. I don't need to conquer the valley. Okay, you want me to conquer the valley. I don't need to conquer it. I do need to develop colonialism, though. It's where Balra Jin is? Oh my god, they moved him? Damn. Can't believe they moved my boy Balra Jin. Can I accept the Serene Haramari? I could. I think I'd... No, I want the Serene Haramari accepted. Yeah. Let's do that. Too high of taxes. Not my problem. Simply don't be broke next time, okay? It's that easy. We can state this, and we can state this. <laughs> uh, hey, Balzac, how you doing? There's hobgoblins in there? Yeah, well, maybe those hobgoblins aren't as mean as the other hobgoblins. So when does the command split up into, like, ten different commands? It's like 1502, right? <laughs> uh, no. No. I know. Okay. There we go. They've taken a bunch of land. I can now summon the Diet. I can seize the Crown Land. Takes me to 29 Crown Land. You want me to build a temple in this province? Very well. I will build a temple in this province. I need to build workshops. Build those workshops. Build those temples. That workshop. We could build regimental camps. Or I could invest in a rampart. Which province is going to be under most threat of the command taking? I 
mean, we could just build ramparts on all these. Right? Everywhere? True. Good point. Just put them everywhere. Fort and Rampart, every single province. Yeah, we can afford that. Uh, that's so true, besties. We can definitely afford that. That's a that's a good investment. Put another 5,000 troops. We're going to go ahead and full state everything. Like it. Hate it. Run from it. Your autonomy will drop all the same. Damn it, I will be a real country. You will respect me. I will have troops. You will die. Fire the mercs. Get rid of wandering warriors. Don't need the merc cost anymore. Grab the monthly war exhaustion reduction. Grab the... That's me making an ooh sound. Uh, <laughs> really, I really hung on to that ooh there. Go ahead and enforce religious unity. I don't really need this. We'll just, we'll just keep it the way it is. Yeah, we don't necessarily need one of these at the moment. Yep, go ahead and state that up. How old is the general? Uh... 66. Build another couple of troops. Make sure the fight 10 is up. Okay. Are you still in wars? You are not. Can I please return core province of. Oh, you have to be neighboring. L. L, L, L. You improve with our allies. Make sure they stay happy with us. Why do you hate me so much? Because I'm allied to your rival. Okay, well. Get over it. Oh, well, there we go. Statesman Advisor release skill 3. Give. Really? Now is when I run out of money? Right now, when I can turn this dude into a vassal. He's going to be disloyal, though. I'll lose this stab. We have three. Like, he's going to be disloyal. You are historical friends? That's... I mean, that's a good point. There's the command truce up. I don't want to fight the command immediately. This will help. An additional minus 15% liberty desire in subjects. And 10% vassal naval force on my contribution. Okay. We need to take tech 9 before we fight the command. Hopefully. I don't think he'll attack me at this point, but we'll see. We can make boats in our lake. Oh, that's right. Lake boats. Tian Hu. Lake Tian Hu. Tian Yu. <laughs> eh. Grand Generalship. <laughs> Sheesh. There's our six shock general we've been looking for. Tools are close to accepting tooltip now. It does, and it's very nice. Fort defense? I don't need the fort defense at the moment, though, is the thing. Alright. Merge foreign diplomacy. Lan Jin Hui and Bal Rajin have such intertwined diplomatic stances that the step to combine our foreign policy is not that far-fetched. Surely, the Lan Jin Hui government can be convinced of this as well. We make them an autonomous vassal. Which means we cannot annex them. It does mean I can give the nobility strong duchies, though. Now, if I want to... 
make them a regular vassal, which I kind of want to do. I don't know what exactly that entails. They gain 65 Liberty Desire and I lose one stab. I think that's worth it. Huh? Four plus 65 is not 100. I'm not crazy, right? Okay. Nah, it's fine. They'll be loyal. It's not a big deal. Revoke the embargo there. But I guess I could say that I was correct. They'd be disloyal. Eh, eh, eh. No, it's, it's fine. It's not a big deal. No edict there. Shorts religious unity here. Convert that. We're about to have rebels rise up. So many rebels rise up. We're going to have rebels as this tag for a long time. An extremely long time. No longer guaranteed, by the way. Auto vassal development isn't applied to the desire. Ah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But it will tick down. And he will be loyal again. Golden Tongue Headquarters would give us 0.5 Diplo wrap and minus 5% Limber Desire subjects. Does give the clergy 5% of land though. You also don't need to be here. Ascaray wants an alliance. Not Ascaray. Ascaray's useless. Is there anyone else who wants an alliance? No. No one useful. No. There's just not. So at this point, I think we're just waiting to get to max manpower and then fighting the command. Now, when is their warning of me up? 1511? Okay. That's fine. Uh, what about Vassalize and Asgore? So you have a powerful mage vassal? I don't think he'll be willing to vassal. I mean, he's close, to be fair. But what happens if Hedarion dies? Then I have this vassal out here that's not worth anything, you know? But at the same time, that's pretty good reconquest. At the same time, at the same time, I would then have to defend him in a war if I wanted to do that. And I don't really want to defend him in a war. Right, but if I scootish him, then there's no point in having a powerful mage vassal. You know? At the same time, at the same time, I would also contribute to this. So, I don't know. I don't know. We're already going to have fun trying to get this vassal to be loyal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we save up for tech. We take another idea. We get another 10% morale of armies. And then we can go and smack the command down. I'll lose the devotion. That's fine. And we get our tier 5 government reform. So this is the new military doctrine for us. Let's check them out. We have bottomless bags, which gives 15% reinforced speed, 15% supply limit, minus 15% reinforced cost. Wind shapers, which gives 5% morale of navies, minus 1% yearly navy tradition decay, plus 15% ship trade power. We have environmental protection charms, minus 15% land attrition, plus 10% reduced morale damage taken by reserves. War gains, or games, plus 50% army drill gain, minus 25% regiment drill loss, minus 10% leader cost. It's pretty good. Adventurer contracts, minus 10% merc cost, 50% trade range, 50% possible condottieri. Interesting. Specialized troops, 20% special unit well, land force limit. Yep, that's going to be good in the late game. That's crazy. Fodder, 
minus 10% cav cost, plus 10% cavalry to infantry ratio, and mage shields, minus 10% fort maintenance, 15% fort defense, 20% garrison size, and plus one max hostile attrition. So it doesn't actually give attrition. It just gives max hostile attrition. Which is worthless. You know? Max is pretty easy to reach though. From what? Now the current max we currently have, well yes, actually the current max we have is six, or five. It would be six with that, it would be seven with defensive ideas. Werewolves, <laughs> true, <laughs> wyverns. <laughs> If we get Adventurers Wanted and we leave the Adventurers Wanted, then maybe, just maybe, it will benefit us. It's possible. Harpies give plus two. So Harpies, Kobolds, Haramari. It's not bad. Let's see, if I didn't take this, which one would I even take? Probably War Games for the Drill. Because Drill is huge. It's so good. You can get up to minus 20% shock damage received. Which just completely offsets your shock damage received here. And gives you an additional minus 10%. Which is massive. So I am slightly tempted by that. Because Fort Defense doesn't matter now. Uh, fort maintenance would be kind of nice. But yeah, fort defense doesn't matter. It's a command. But the memes, I know, but we can't really use the memes is the problem. We don't have access to using of the memes. And of course, to, become, to beat the command, we become it. Yeah, you know what? And it makes our leaders cheaper, which also stacks nicely with the fact that our leaders are more expensive when we recruit them because we get the plus two shock. So that also fits in well. I think War Games is probably our best bet. It's inevitable that you'll create a tabletop War Games community in your nation. No, no, no. That's, that, we couldn't do that. Imagine someone will make a game where you do war. Hmm, weird. Weird. Why do I have so many freaking rebels? Maybe we should have just he hooed the humans. Maybe that would have been the correct play. <laughs> Less rebels. Da, da, da. Someone make a game called European Universalis. Probably some Laurentish guy. Yeah. Canorian Universalis. And then people will argue that they only need content for Canor. Uh, yeah, I can't drill though while I have all these rebels that want to rise up. I guess I can just leave these 17,000 to do rebel suppression. And you can just drill. There we go. So we should get it pretty quickly. We gain 1.24 each month from drilling, which is not bad. All right, we're up to 60,000 troops. We recover that manpower and we'll be in a pretty good spot to fight the command, I think. We can match the command's numbers, just about, because we're little bolds. What's their actual force limit? They might not be at it. Okay, they have 134 force limit. The fourth dragon dance. Stack that. Philosopher and prestige or money? We're at max presti prestige. We have an advisor. So you just give me the money. Don't know exactly what I'm going to spend it on, but... 
Actually, I do. You need to be having a marketplace, and you need to upgrade your center of trade. You need to also upgrade your center of trade and also have a marketplace. And we'll need to upgrade this center of trade as well. The mages are buying land. That's fine. Alright, there we go. There's our Diplo annexation cost, and we also complete our next national idea, Memories of the Great Burning. When Jahair demanded we pay tribute to his Phoenix Empire, we peacefully, peacefully obliged. For a time, we coexisted with the long-eared strangers and their shiny god, understanding that he was clearly an aspect of almighty Balrajin. That is, until the Sun Cult missionaries arrived in droves. They called our golden statues heretical idols and our grand temples a monument to blasphemy. At first, they mocked our attempts to correct their misunderstanding. Then they lashed out in barbaric rage. They plundered the monasteries and set them ablaze, a monstrous act that people remember as the Great Burning. But we also remember what happened next. When Jahair was assassinated, the Goldscale Kobolds rose up to cast off the elven yoke, and the mountain springs ran red with their blood. Our righteous fervor in defense of Balrogen burns brighter than any sun. 10% morale of armies. Da, da, da. Can you turn off all the rage down in Canada for Telem Achievement? We take the World Conquest. Uh, I don't know. I didn't realize that our models were actually shorter. That's adorable. That's the first time I actually just like looked at it. Uh, I suppose you could, but then you didn't really earn the achievement, did you? To be fair. If I'm going to put the time in to get the achievement, which, by the way, I did calculate how much time it took to get that achievement. I wrote it down. Hold on. It was... <laughs> Three days, ten hours, twenty-two minutes, and one second. That's how much time it was to play that. About eighty-two hours. Uh, if I'm going to spend eighty-two hours, I'm going to spend eighty-two hours. I'm gonna, if I'm going to get the achievement, I'm going to put the time in. I'm not going to, not going to cheapskate it. Three days, more like five months. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's fair. Alright, we take that. We upgrade to... Hmm. I know we went with the defensive options. Do we want to go with the defensive option again? Yeah, we probably should. Just because Hobgoblin units are very offensive-minded, right? If I remember correctly. So I think we want to go for Dragon Dancers. As the land becomes more and more dangerous, the Wardens have now had to adapt, now actively engage in invaders in martial duels known as Dragon Dances when they cannot be convinced to leave. Alright, no Edict needed, and you get Enforced Religious Unity. He can't. Um, my vassal needs a border to do that. Sorry to disappoint. Just trust me, I looked into it. Thank you. I will establish a Golden Tongue headquarters. As our domain grows and we become more entwined with the wider goings on in Yanch and the remoteness of our capital is becoming increasingly inconvenient for routine diplomacy. The Golden Tongue Clan wish to establish a new hub in Yanzhong so that their envoys can be quickly dispatched up and down the Yan. While in any embassy wishing to speak directly with the Golden Sage would still need to make the trek to Balriza, the proposed facility would greatly improve the efficiency and speed of our lower level diplomatic communiques. Huge. If that helps make this guy a bit more loyal. As long as Yi declares war on Kohai, that's fine. Bum, 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 I'm still upset that the command warned me. Bum, 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 bum. I would need to do some development if I don't want to... Well, that'd be fine. I was thinking if I was trying to sell C's there. You want Hu Bao to be Righteous Path? Uh, No. You want me to take that from the command? No. I'll do that. 
I'll build your workshop. Good enough? Group of Vassal, which one? Oh. Oh, we stopped improving with him because he's no longer an ally. Duh. Duh. That will help with the loyalty too. Such a risk to call in Buvari against the command, though. But it may be worth it, is the thing. Well, we're getting our manpower back. We're getting ready. Chinbin Rung is getting pretty large. Now, if I declare on the command, would Chinbin Rung join me? They would. Now, isn't that interesting? That may mean that we don't want to go for a war score based on battles. At the same time, though, we kind of still do, I think. I don't know. Max out trust. It was at one point. Uh, it's not anymore. Does turning them into a non-autonomous vassal lower trust? Is that how that works? There we go. They're happy. Beautiful. Hedarion begging for a chance. Yeah, well, he can keep begging. Do you remember what the elves did to us? Hmm? The Great Burning? We just had a whole thing about this. The Great Burning. We can't trust an elf. It doesn't matter if he's the good elf. Okay? He's still an elf. He's still gonna... Tr he's gonna try and colonize us. He's gonna do it. I played the mission tree. He's still an imperialist. Hedarion is not different, okay? Hedarion is exactly the same. He just wants to go conquer people. Oh, nuts. They're gonna get autonomy in a trade province. Boo. Oh, there's a fort, never mind. And we play Kate. Because I do not want the command to support their independence. Guess the command will do that. Don't want to deal with that. Okay, you need to start drilling. You guys are almost all full drill. Well, some of you are. Some of you still need some work. We will drill. We will get professionalism, which lets us do more damage. And the drill will t let us take less damage. And then we'll go and we'll kick some ass. Ally star elves? No. <laughs> no, they're far away. And no. <laughs> and Darren's just good PR. That's true. He is just good at PR. You can change him? I don't think so. I don't think I can. How old is he? He's 138. Have you ever tried to change the mind of someone who's like 30? You think someone who's changing their mind, you think changing their mind when they're a hundred years older is going to be easier? Sonic's Infrastructure has functioning infrastructure. That's true. I'll give you that. That's fair. They do have functioning infrastructure. Hey, you're not allowed to be disloyal. Oh, it's gonna take so long for this guy to be loyal. He's better diplotech than I do. It's fine. I could have left him as an autonomous vassal, to be fair. To be fair. I think we want to not take this. I think we want to develop the institution. Because someone has to, and the AI sure won't, so I have to be the one to do it. Something we're gonna say about the Austrian. He did build highways. I've never heard anybody say that line. I'm gonna be real with you. I've never heard a single person take that line of defense. For the mustache man. <laughs> At least they'll join your wars now. Yeah, that's true. Former president. Well, guess I'm not listening all that closely then. 
<laughs> Which one? Yeah, we've had like, what, 50, 50 million of them at this point. Actually, I don't even remember. I should know. It's like 40... Fuck, dude. My brain is so fried. My brain is so fried. Uh, many Halasi fishing villages are strategically situated in the middle of lakes or large rivers, providing easy access to fishing grounds and offering substantial protection. However, this protection is sometimes compromised by roaming bandits on boats and ships who exploit and harass these vulnerable villages, as the authorities either lack the will or capability to intervene. Such an incident occurred at a small lake village in Teochi. When the local authorities failed to come to their aid, a spirit in the form of a pale lady emerged to assist the village. Adorned in white robes and a wide-brimmed hat, she bore bright red tattoos on her skin. Employing some form of elemental powers, the spirit lady confronted the bandits, forcing many of them who couldn't swim into the water and causing the bandit lord to meet his demise, drowning aboard his large junk ship. Other bandits who sought vengeance and attempted to reach the village also met fatal ends. Local authorities have refrained from visiting the village, fearing that the spirit may hold a grudge against them as well. However, it can be stated with certainty that any form of banditry in Teochi has been quelled, at least for the time being. You thought I was Canadian? How dare you? How dare you think I was Canadian? No! I'm from the U.S. of A. Canadian. Imagine. Imagine being Canadian. Cringe. <laughs> uh, we got that National Unrest guy. Forge your documents. I'll take that. How's our inflation looking? Somewhat high. Somewhat high. Now, when's that warning up again? March of 1511. March of 1511, we declare war on Ashikuma. Make the merchants pay for it. I do want to tolerate ogres if we can. <laughs> nice to see Katara and Ambinar. Yes, it's good she got a shout out. Yeah, let's get rid of all these rebels. Uh, adventurers insult the clergy. I can switch around their loyalties a bit. Imagine not being European. I can imagine it. It's great. Wait, is he going to come fight my rebels? What? I chose the wrong stack. Actual L moment. I didn't need to lose those 318 troops. But more importantly, I lost the drill on those troops. L. Actual L. <laughs> he's from Outer California? Dang, I didn't know we added a new state in. That's crazy. <laughs> A new state just dropped. Uh, there's the command. I will rival the command. Because they're stupid and ugly. I will issue an embargo on them. Yeah, what's up, command? Like, what's up? What do you want? Okay, gotta go take care of these guys. Then we can just drill. We can drill... Uh, ooh, I could also go to war with Beyond Fang, to be fair. No, we have to be ready for the other war. We have to be ready. You know what you need? What's combat with? Only 25. You need cannons. But I need to drill these troops, but I'm going to just put them with this stack then. Look at the command. They're sawing your continent in half. Yeah, well, you know. Just command doing command things. Okay, good. I think you're going to be loyal forever now. I think we're good. Uh, we need to build a spy network up on the Oni. Wait, do you not have a truce with the command? Oh no. Oh no, you know what he's gonna do. Oh no. Oh, also, if I got, if I took the, this above 30, they'd be loyal. The moment I declare war on Ashikuma, he's gonna declare on him, if not before. <sighs> I 
Do I want to upgrade this to level 3? Yes, I do. Yes, I... Scooby Dooby Doo. God, Scooby Doo is such a good show. Classic. Classic, classic, classic. When will this be done building? 58 months? Okay, go for it. Also landed the weird 2 p.m. Oh, you want Z? Yeah, but that's fine. I can separate piece them out. And I can kill the them. The command only kind of wants their land, but they do want it. And you, usually what they want, they get. They don't have a claim on Ashikuma at the moment, though. Blackstep does, though, and that's all they need. Oh, no, he's definitely going to kill him. He just moved Bloodsong to his border. <laughs> okay, we need to be ready to jump on him. If the commander declares the war, we need to be ready to take as much as I can get away with. I lost anti-monstrous on, on who? Who did I lose anti-monstrous on? On Onichan? Uh, you sure about that? Oh no, the warning ended. The warning ended. You can't stop me, Command. He's gonna do it. He's gonna he's 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 gonna enforce peace. He's gonna enforce peace on me, and I'm not gonna be happy. I'm gonna be very upset. I'm gonna be very upset when he enforces peace on me. Rush the fort. Uh good news. He deleted a fort. That makes my life much easier. Okay, you're gonna go and... <clears throat> All right, there we go. Also, I was playing Dwarf Fortress this morning, guys. I'm so back. I'm so back into Dwarf Fortress. It's bad. I was being so good at being productive. It's so Jover for me, actually. It's so jover. I got back in the mines and I was like, oh, baby. <laughs> Think all the cool stuff I could do. Uh, Yinti, gifter of silent children. The silence of a newborn is always a bad sign, but when a whole province is experiencing a dramatic increase in stillbirths and crib deaths, something is deeply wrong. This has happened in Kabir Garko, and the population is deeply disturbed and fearful of what is going on. Despite efforts, we may not be able to identify any poison water sources, disease-ridden crops, or any material causes. Thus, we believe it is it is Yinti who is punishing the province. The reason behind this remains uncertain, but some elders in the province speak of infidelity and broken love as the possible cause. Tisk tisk tisk. Reverse your capital and assault we get enough war score where they can't enforce. Uh, I don't plan on assaulting forts. I usually only assault forts if I absolutely have to. We'll see how I feel about that after I get enforced peace on. Very good. My vassal has taken out uh, most of the most of Guwama's troops, so that's nice. I could get another general from the estates, but I don't really need one at the moment. Let's just start looting provinces. So here's the dealio. I can't full annex the Oni. It's not gonna happen. So do I just Do I leave their capital?
peace out the other guy and leave the province inside? Are you saying you want C? Leave this guy alone? With a white piece and then come back for this in five years? Because the guarantee is going to drop. It's a large word at the command. What do you want me to do? It's got to happen. Eventually we get the CB to destroy the command, but we got to get there. You know? Taking the science, how do you get it? Yeah, I know. That's why I want to take it. But I need all the provinces, but I'm one province short. And then from Gowamid, I need to take this. That's 24% overextension. That's 58. 96 war score. Damn, maybe I should have declared for a province. I don't think it would have given us enough war score, but it, it might have. You think I need to? Hmm. The thing is, if I white piece this guy out, the command might build a spy network on them and take the land. But they don't necessarily want it. Oh, they have a diplomat in charge. Huge. Age Denny skin. Well, we don't have the... We didn't need 800 Splendor to get the war score cost. So, yeah, I think we are just going to white piece these guys. We're going to hope and we're going to pray that the command doesn't fight them in the next five years. And then I can fight them. That's the copium we're going to go on, okay? That is our copium. We will cope. Uh, hey, Mark of Mark, how goes the search? We're trying to get to the next step here. Trying. Land next to go a part of your claims. Go on with this stuff? I would only assume that this is going to get added in to what I need because it's in the subcontinent. So. That is why I'll be taking it, and that's why I cobbledrized them. So we white piece them out. Then you guys are going to make your way back down here. Take off 7,000 of these troops. And 7,000 are going to go carpet siege, and the rest are going to go fight, and then eventually push in. He's up to 42,000 troops. He was down to 16. Are they mercs? War enemies? No, he just built them. Sheesh. Okay. Respect. Maybe I'm going to need a couple more troops out there. Did they get tech 6? They did. Fair enough. I'm a little bit nervous for these guys' safety. So let's kind of circle back up and around and see where they're at. It looks like they're just backing up. Yeah, I think they're just backing up. So let's go occupy Jungmuk so I can take Lipshu. Deploy my priest free land. Okay, apparently you were not paying attention to what I said. You were not paying attention to the plan. All right? I did not white piece by accident. It was an intentional white piece. It is all intentional. On purpose. I promise. Okay. Sure, man. <laughs> if you want to go land over there, you can do that. <laughs> I'm 
Not my problem. <laughs> Twitch chat needs subway servers to focus. No! Free your mind. Free your mind from the TikTok brain, okay? I believe in you. You can do it. I believe. Free yourselves. Listening is hard. That's true. We now have a 113 in charge. Yeehaw. Oh, that also makes this guy more disloyal. Yay. Uh, time for war. We get more morale of armies. Less fort defense, less garrison size, more siege ability. We need a new protege. I think we just go back to Golden Tongue, right? Unless there's a mission that specifically states that I need a certain group. Which it doesn't. Then I just choose the Golden Tongue. Five, three, two. Okay, now if this dude could just simply die, that'd be great. Because he's really bad. He's like really bad. He's a one, one, three. You go there. 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 That's wasteland. They live longer now. Suffering from success. Okay, and then all of you will be brought back together over here. Can you general them? Nope. We are a theocracy. Some theocracies allow that. Ours does not. Not yet. Though, isn't there a reform that eventually shows us what our ruler stats are? Isn't it like kind of far down though? Isn't it, is it separation of powers? Divine guidance, theocratic democracy, constitutional theocracy, public elections? No. Dynastic? No. It's somewhere in here somewhere. Available to you because you are not the Jad. Okay. They must have their own thing. I don't know. I thought there was something for Theocracies that allows you to see it. More like Theocrat with martial arts won't fight the war. That's, us. That's a good point. That's a good point. We're all about punching people. So why, why do I not get to punch? Size does matter. Ogres have a long tradition of building monumental fortified settlements, possibly dating back to the time of their giant ancestors. Tradition they maintain to this day, showing significant prowess and construction, due in part to their size and strength. This is not simply a choice of style, as it's blatantly clear ogres are rather tall fellows. With an imposing height of at least 10 feet, they positively need larger dwellings than other races, and often find themselves in awkward situations when living in our cities due to their blundering frames. In hopes of remedying this, a delegation of ogre master masons, architects, and notables has presented the court with a proposal for a series of sweeping reforms to the standards of construction in our realm in order to accommodate to the needs of their growing community. Aware of the seemingly daunting cost, they assure this style will not only favor their race, but also reputation as a patron of the arts. Till 1523, I gain 15% construction cost in time, I gain 10 prestige, 10 devotion, and a very large tolerance increase of ogres. Yeah, I'll do that. That seems worth. Okay, we absolutely obliterate Gowamit's troops. <laughs> this doesn't seem funny because it's kobolds versus ogres. It'd be just massive. It's essentially just like an open room for us to go through their doors. There we go. <laughs> Our troops just deleted them. Uh, but we do need to go and... Get things siege down. And I guess you're gonna go on a little adventuring expedition. Uh, 
All right. It doesn't really matter because we're just waiting for this war anyways. The command would need to get a claim on UNZ to do their thing. It's looking like Lot de Kong and Buvari are their next targets, but I don't see them declaring war on Buvari with us being an ally to them. I think the command might be, and this is a might, I don't know for sure, they might actually be a little bit nervous to declare war on us at this point. Again, it's a might. They might still be totally fine with it. Yep, you under that siege. Please see an individual Cobalt Troops be in my face stealers. Well, you know, I can't lose the entire army. They're back up to 17,000 though, so I should be a little careful. With my 1k stacks. Okay, you just make your way over here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I mean, there is a lot of grain out here, and we like grain. It's what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's another four force limit if I take that grain. Which is not insignificant. The Faithful in Enemy Lands. No mercy for the enemies of Bal Rajin. I, it doesn't matter. It's not even a fort. It's just a just a province. We really don't have to think about that hard. I might. Oh, earlier when you said I lost uh, Anti Monstrous, I might have lost Anti Monstrous on Thunderfist or Blood Song. That might have been what you saw. They might have moved him away. Love seeing your entire subcon take two states, right? It's so good. I love it. Dun, dun, dun. Here, here, here. Do 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 we'll have to send another couple troops under the siege to help out. He's up to twenty thousand troops. Another three thousand. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Maybe I needed roads. Maybe I did, in fact, need some roads. Run. <laughs> run, little kobolds, run! This is green advisor. Oh, off with their head. No. Not off with their head. It's fine. They're allowed to criticize us. We need to develop the institution. 25 is a bit high. 18 is a bit high. 12. So Ying Zhen is a pretty good spot. Would like it to be somewhere... Ooh, that's pretty good. It's a Silk Province. 17 development is a little bit on the high side. But not... Insane? Our merchants are... Pretty loyal. What's the cutoff to get to minus 10% all power costs? Isn't it... Uh, is it 60? Influence? Pretty sure it's 60. So I can give them reduced research regulations to get to minus 10% all power cost. I unfortunately don't have a powerful mage or a court mage advisor. But that's okay. Brings it down to 31. Current and development brings it down to 26. Expanding infrastructure once brings it down to 19. Yeah, it's too late for a mage tower. I would have needed to have built that a long time ago. Plus, remember, we have increased build cost and time right now. So it would take 61 months. 
Let's develop with mill points first. Be nice if I could upgrade this, but we don't have the money anyways. Alright. Try and focus on... Mostly Diplo. I mean, it's silk, so... And then, even though it will cost more, I'm still building that workshop. Cool. That wasn't even that bad. I need this land right here. This is the only thing that I really super care about at the moment. I guess I could take this just for... sake of taking it. I could take this entire state if I wanted to. He's going to make me siege down his capital. Which is fine. As long as this war ends by the time I can declare war on UNC. That's the only thing that really matters to me. No, I fucked up. I shouldn't have clicked that. I should have gotten rid of reduced research regulations first. Uh oh. Uh, it's actually fine. I can sell C's here pretty soon. It's just not that big of a deal. As long as no one gets their independence supported anytime soon. <laughs> Snake Dog Precursor. Why? Why do you want me to go into the valley so badly? I have Yanchen right here that I need to conquer still. I don't have the governing capacity to also take the valley. You're a gnome? Clip it. Clip it. We got him, boys. Gnome spotted. Gnome spotted. Come on, we're playing kobolds. These might not be the kobolds that hate gnomes, but it, it's, you know, it's still a part of being a kobold. All right. Gawamid, you will give me what I want. You will give me... Ooh. War reps and lots of money. Oh, I do love money. Oh, I do love money. I'm a greedy little guy. Just to make sure. Yep, that is what we're going to need. So we'll take that. Then from you. Apparently I have no diplomats. We'll take that. Right. Core it all up. And we're not even overextended. Look at that. Bring everybody home. I thought he was going to call me into a defensive war against the command. I will accept that, but I will not help you. You're on your own. This is why we need more than one type of, one type of alliance. I want a defensive pact with Buvari. I don't want to join him in his wars. And I don't need him to join him in my wars. Placate, thank you. Pay off his debt. I'll placate him. Like, I don't... Oh, dude, are you kidding me? They immediately come up here? Why? I'm not even the weaker target in this case. I'm actively the stronger target. Can you not... There's a button for it. I understand there's a button for it, but that button also means that your ally is less, is more likely to break your alliance. And it also doesn't replace the fact that I just want a defensive alliance and I don't want an, an alliance that goes both ways. Just because there's a button to say to not do an offensive force doesn't, doesn't mean that it's a defensive alliance. It's different. It's different. Oh my goodness. We have lots of rebels.
You don't think it's different? Well, I think you're all wrong. L. Nothing you can do now. I have defeated you in the marketplace of ideas. Uh, no L plus ratio plus you're incorrect plus double L plus triple L uh, plus no U plus L 2.0. It's that easy. It's that easy, boys. We got them. I'm going to build a bunch of courthouses because I do need those. Thank you. Streamer just complained detected. Isn't that what I'm supposed to do? Well, when I watch all the big streamers, all they do is complain. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. That's an overgeneralization. Not fair. Not fair. That's Miltech 10. I don't care about Miltech 10. Not one single bit. I'd rather finish defensive ideas. My 7% fort defense, or my 7% fort maintenance plus 25% fort defense plus 30% reinforced speed. Finishes another natural idea. Balrus is devoted. Walrus the Gold, bringer of songs, slayer of ignorance, wisest of masters. The sagas record that his coming was heralded by a great and thunderous roar, cracking the ground sky and forcing our people to the surface for the first time. By his almighty power, he could have devoured us, enslaved us, or simply driven us away, but he did not. Instead, the paragon of benevolence lived alongside our ancestors in the mountain caves and opened our eyes to a whole new world. Before his countless lessons, our people sung only songs of sorrow and mourning and built only what we needed to survive. Now we sing his praises to the golden light of the sunrise and carve resplendent cliffside temples in his name. And though he only remained with us for a short time, we will never forget his eternal promise. To return one day and walk alongside us once more. United in his exaltation under the flag of the golden dragon, we named our nation after the object of all our hopes and our one true god, Bal Rishin. Plus one taunts true faith, point five yearly devotion. We'll go ahead and we'll take that. An extra Diplo relation. Sure. Now we have Oni Rebels we need to take care of. And then we'll quickly take these guys out. And then I think we'll do a Reconquest War against Beyond Fang. He's allied all of the southern region. What's it called again? Uh, Vim Detrong. He allied them all. Cool. It's going to take a long, long time for me to break South Hales out of my mind. Be a long, long time. Okay, you're going to walk down here. I could select a new way of... I fought that whole war taking 10% more shock damage received. And it barely made a dent. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Buy that inflation down. Okay. Can I get rid of this? And this. Thank you. Uh, hey, Mastani. No more telling. Has Wokong been accomplished while I was away? It was. It was accomplished. Good news. We got the victory. Uh, all the VODs are up on the YouTube channel if you want to go watch like the end of it. I expect nobody to watch the whole thing because it's, you know, 82 hours, which is a lot. That's a lot. But if you want to see the last last stream or so, um, it is up on the VOD channel. Sethless, famous for including the center. <laughs> yeah, you know, funny. I thought that was just part of its charm, okay? I thought it built character, added story. How hard was the start of the Gold Bowl campaign? Uh, we had one restart, but that was mostly because I was being picky and I wanted to be more efficient. Uh, the first war isn't that difficult. It's the first Command War and Beyond Fang War you gotta really watch out for. Mm. There are a lot of things that go wrong. If the Horde comes down after you, it can also be kind of an end game. But, yeah. Any hours of background noise while I meal prep and cook curry sounds baller? Well, there you go. That's a lot of curry, though. I'm just saying. That is a lot of curry. Uh, make a long-term investment. Give me the difficult points. And we'll go ahead and we'll finish our defensive ideas here. For 33% more garrison size, more hostile attrition. I can go ahead and get rid of reduced research regulations. And Fax Fazang Quick Breaths. Is that his whole name? Yep, that's his whole name. That is his ball risk given name. 
gives us more missionary strength and a free stab. Thank you. That will actually be kind of useful. Because I am going to need to convert a whole bunch of this stuff. Alright, there's our truce with UNC up. I'm not even in position to declare the war. Do I? Oh boy. Do I risk them breaking their alliance? I think so. I want to finish the course. Uh, finish the game with Duke Azir, Varian Joel. Can I recommend? Oh, yes. We will play the Elephant Riders at some point. Who did you start as? I'm curious. Which one? Did you choose the correct option or the incorrect options? There is one correct option to play as. Of course. The rest are incorrect. Uh, last time I played Baljin, the not Korean passed the horde, attacked Lan Shenhui in 1460 after killing the horde. Oh, Mythical Conqueror? I was like, how did they do that? Oh, <laughs> Mythical Conqueror would do that. We do have great conquerors on, but they are delayed for 15 more months. In 15 months, they will no longer be delayed. Okay, we, that's too long for me. We're declaring the war. We are declaring the war right now. Okay. Put that there. You're going to follow them. Wow, I scuffed this up. I don't know how I scuffed up so badly. Okay, you go there, you follow. Go get him. Apparently we have access to the entirety of the command. Thanks, command. Appreciate it. No way he's about to run into the mountains. Okay, I was like, that's insane. Actually just cheating at that point. Straight up cheating. We should convert this stuff. We're probably going to want to trade company this. I think the boards look nice. Yeah, I mean, we'll take some stuff off of them. The one tiger starts with 24 development, a 73 year old 111 ruler. That is the correct decision. That's, that's the best one. I mean, personally, in my opinion, in my unbiased opinion, that is the best tag. I don't know about instant abdication. I think the 111 is fine, right? I think he's pretty cool. I, I think he's a pretty good leader. Uh, I think people are underrating him a lot right now. I think he's in the meta. I think he's actually the strongest ruler in Ambinar. Uh, but other than that, that's the correct one. <laughs> uh, during first mission, it's quickly. I was basically stop everything right. Yes, uh, that is that is actually my favorite favorite start. You can expand super quickly as these guys. Poey boys would never abdicate him. No, Poey boys should abdicate him. He's terrible. He's a one, 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 corrupt something or another with really good air. But yeah, just you and you find the flip ranking. So one is better than six. <laughs> no, 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 no mana allowed. No mana allowed. Uh, you can tell internet plebs age by asking whether they kill in Minecraft or in Roblox. Yeah, for me it's in Minecraft. FBI can't get you then. You're free. Hey, shout out to uh, Amy's General here who has lived so long. I don't know if that's because of the changes they made to Generals. I'm going to assume that it is. But let me tell you what, it's nice having my General live. And not just die in five years after you hired them. You kill a net hack. <laughs> Funny. Maybe kind of Poi Boy has done irreparable damage to the mod. No, it's made everything better. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. You just jinxed it? No, even if they die now. We've had this general for so long. Hired in 1452. 1452. If they die now, they retire and die in honor. I do appreciate generals living longer and not, you know, 
It saves so many mill points, too. It saves an insane amount of mill points. You don't have to hire generals constantly all the time. The command instantly goes into a golden age. Fear. Why? Did he force convert somebody? He must have. No. Oh, stolen gem, maybe. He might have converted stolen gem. Oh, Serpent Spine and Rahan. Right. Right. Yep, no, that, that's what it is. He is on the other continent. Scammed. Scammed. Please. Please. Let me finish the war, man. Yeah, it's the two continents one. He, I don't think, I don't know if he converted anyone. Yippee! Ta-da! Ball Rajin, as the gods intended. Well, not really. We have a lot more to take. Okay, and now I need to. I'm not going to click anything until I'm done with the main course. I don't know if it's actually going to do anything, but I'm not risking it. You don't need all of these troops up here. Lenshin Hui wants soldiers. I will send them soldiers. Because I don't want them to be more upset with me. We're going to sell seas again to get all the money. I love sell seizing. Oh, look at that. They want me to make Asgore a subject. Damn. First it was chat. Then it was the game. I'm going to build a workshop instead. I'm going to let these finish coring. Well, actually, these don't matter because I don't have claims on them. So, into Unbeksu, which is this state that we just took. Following ancient sightings of a golden cloud moving northwest from Jinki, it is time to pay the ogres a visit. As the search area for Balrus grows increasingly vast, the pay for searching attracts an increasingly strange assortment of people, with even bike lanes and adventuring parties now joining in on the search. Whether they're as thorough as the military or the zealous volunteers is up for debate, but none of it seems to matter anyway, as every single mountaintop in this region is distinctly devoid of our colossal draconic icon. I guess we'll just have to push further south. North. I can read good. I read so good. Uh, we gain five armor tradition, lose a thousand manpower. We gain the search for Valorous Optimism, which gives us five percent morale of armies. So we lose two point five percent from deep optimism. We gain permanent claims on land that I already own. Golden Shigri, Kabir Garko, which is the gold, right? Yeah, it's the gold. Has a fort, at least nine base production, lower than 50% autonomy. The bike lane humans have proven themselves cordial, and though it is still a work in progress, they are finding their place in our society, and as they do, new factions arise. The most prominent of such factions is a sort of bike lane gold scale union of craftsmen, artisans, and miners. They are organizing mostly in the far northeast in the gold rich province of Kabir Garko, whose humans have long suffered under the ogre yoke. It might be early to give them a seat on the council, and it is an unprecedented event for a human to be on the Sage Council, but doing so would surely make the people more willing to embrace the light of Balris. Plus, there's plenty of profit to be made with these men. The teeming arm faction is now organized enough to warrant a headquarters, and we get Kobold Mountain Building in the Gold Province, which is minus 25% local dev cost, 25% defensiveness, and plus one possible number of buildings. We gain one base production, and colonizing the Shigri for gold skills will shatter any bike lane left-hand path hope, converting many holdouts in the realm. Is that going to stack with the... Shigri? Or does it get rid of them? So 
Social mobility. Sure, dog. No, he keeps it. It does stack. Huh. That's pretty nice. Okay, next up we have the Northern Ogre Hills. If the Southern Ogre Hills did not house Balrus, then surely we can find him atop a Northern Mountaintop, right? Northern o Ogre Hills search. If we push any further north, they... I need to drink water. Uh, you got a proper mage quickly on a 5 mil king. It was like 11 shock. Stack wiped 64 troops at command stack with 26 elephants. My only complaint is the mission tree ends pretty quickly. Some of the mission rewards are quite lackluster. Yeah, powerful mage with the with the elephants, I can only imagine, would be brutal. Okay, nor, northern ogre hill search. Pushed further north, they said. You'll find Balrish, they said. Our sons died for a dream. Angry gold scale and Balriza, surrounded by a crowd of like-mindedly frustrated individuals in front of the ri Kong. The search went splendidly, except for two minor details. High casualties due to the ogre resistance forces and the fact that we didn't find Balrus. This pessimism is becoming a problem. Gain 5 army tradition and we are now at minus 5% morale of armies because we're pessimistic. In the Valley Trust. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. I need a diplomat employed. But first, we have Ogre Hill Settlements. We own Sidokorchi. Old capital. After the success of Kobold colonies closer to Balriza, settlers have started to get more and more ambitious, sometimes traveling the same roads that our armies are still fighting over. The northern Ogre Hills are far from safe, yet the gem-rich lands of Shunukorchi attract many ambitious miners. With a little stimulation, it can be turned into another profitable and sustainable colony. We add a Kobold minority size, gain two base production, lose 25 autonomy there, and the gold scales will settle in the Demon Hills, developing the area but temporarily creating labor shortages in the homeland. And now I need to build a temple here, which it already is, and I need it to have 15 Diplo development. Why? 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 It's fine, we'll figure it out eventually. Now, oh right, we need to put our troops in a bunch of territory around the mountain. Right, the Focal Expedition. We can do that. We can put one, two, three, maybe we just go to war with Beyond Fang actually. What does the teaming arm headquarters want to win? Admin power? Gives minus 100% local gold depletion chance? Uh, we'll have to wait until we take some more crown land back. But after that, we can do it. Minus 100%, huh? She just cuts it in half. That's pretty good. In 40 dev gold mine? I don't know. I don't know. I do know that I need to take uh, tech here somewhere. Mil tech, probably. It really sucks that we have this terrible leader. Absolutely atrocious leader. We can stop focusing on mill, I think. Just even it out a bit. We can... Ooh, we're going to need to build a fort right here. Or even right here. No, it, it does need to be somewhere in here. Put it right here. Otherwise, he's going to walk through and then down. I can afford a level 3 Diplo Advisor. Let's get the one we need. Send out word. 200 crowns and 100 Diplo points. It is time to send word to all settlements near the mountains of Hales. Someone must have seen Balrus in the last thousand years. A plan of gargantuan size, sending a civil servant to every single settlement that borders a mountain that's not been searched yet. Several ranges come to mind, such as the Paravimvada, the range that separates Lush Rahin from Sandy Bulwar. The Serpent Spine is harder to survey, as a large part of it is rather unfriendly to kobold visitation due to centuries of hobgoblin doctrine. 
But that's what the knowing eyes spies are for, after all. It's worth a shot. So the end of the game, we get ears everywhere, giving minus 24 yearly tax income, plus one diplomats, 0.5 diplo rep, and plus one diplomatic relations. And apparently I'm now close to overextension? I guess I haven't unpaused yet. Okay. Well, you've got to be stated up, and let's build a fort here. Unless this has a Chigri. This not. Ooh, heretic culture. Right. Do we want to accept the ogres? Is it all ogre now? Or do we accept them? I kind of want to accept them. I don't see any reason not to accept them, to be honest with you. They're already coexisting. They gave local construction time reductions, local tax modifier. I think we just accept them. I've got the slot. That gets them up to integrated. Which gives us local missionary strength too. And manpower. Yeah. Who knew being accepting is so good. No, Lanshan Hui, I'm not going to give you money. I'm sorry. But you're not worth the money to me. You're not that disloyal. Your opinion's high. Okay, now I need 300 ducats, 5k manpower, and at least 6 troops. So I do think that our next war is going to be on Fang. I do need to own Zhao Do, though, at some point. What gives me the CB? I don't know where I get the CB from to kill the command, but I would like to find it. Because I only want to fight the command one more time if I can. Though he is on my border, which is, you know, something. I need to clear one Askery. Rajna Haga wants an alliance. It's not a terrible alliance, to be honest with you. And if the command declares war on him, I just don't join it. The left hand path does? You're lying, right? <laughs> you lying to me right now? I'm not seeing anything that looks like I get the... CB? Might be after the mission tree expansion. Oof. Okay, so I do have to fight the command. I have to take this, unfortunately. Yeah, we definitely want to focus on converting this stuff first. So, half states. Force religious unity. We do need to be careful about our governing capacity. We are getting up there for the old GC. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, yes, I will take 50 free admin points. Thank you very much. Because we will need them. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. I could, if I wanted to, just add all this into Trade Company. I know it's not an efficient way to do the trade company, but I do think it would be fine. Then I don't have to convert it either. There we go. And how close does that get us to a merchant? Not super close. I need to take this province and add it in, and then I could get it. What can you see of Sarhal? I can see this little bit right here. God, that's some border gore. I would only assume that Gazelle Mora did this. Maybe that's just them, though. Maybe that's just them doing them things, but... Jad looking healthy? Yeah, that's true. 
They are a great power. They have 828 development. So. It's not like they're doing bad by any means. If I full state all this stuff, it's going to put us over our governing capacity, I think. Time to find out. Nope. We're good. Our governing capacity buildings got built. Huge. All right, we can upgrade to Riders of the Scaled Spear. One of the most prominent mercenary bands in our lands, the Scaled Spears use spearheads crafted from our own scales and charge into battle without worry, sure that they are protected by fate by the grace of their spears. And we have cannons. You can click on them in Harag Seta. They're Tech 7. They're allied to Rebecca Kerr. And Jadar's heir is a powerful mage. Also Craven. Tekaral Makan is a vassal of Jad. And Edu's Vakan. So, I mean, nothing too out there and crazy. Uh, hey, you? Yeah, see, we're going to do that whole defensive alliance thing with you. I have no interest in joining your, uh, your wars. What's my force summon at? 79? Yeah. Get up to almost another full stack. We've got plenty of manpower at this point. Company capacity is looking fine. So let's go to war with you. You are at war with the command. I guess you guaranteed Ascaray. The AI really is something, you know? It really is something. How expensive are our generals? 44. And if I implement the land leader shock, they are 61. And I do want to hire another general, I think. So let's send you over to fight fight 10. Just kidding. I'll send my good general over to fight fight 10. And I'll keep my pretty good general here. Do you think the command will break his alliances with his allies? Counterpoint. I could just declare war on fight 10 individually. Ooh. Slaughter Reconquest. Do I take another influence idea here? Yes, I do. Dragon Dances. Among the wise clan sages of the Golden Council of Bal Rajin, the Master Sage is chosen to act as the final decider in all disputes. But in emulation of our patient and benevolent teacher, Master Sages often decide to remain impartial. There can only be one way to resolve such an impasse, a martial arts duel. Known as a dragon dance, this holy tradition demands we tirelessly hone our skills and train our bodies into brilliant golden weapons, all for the sake of Balrogin's blessed peace. And when we turn those weapons against foreign invaders, they will be all the sharper. Minus 1% yearly army tradition decay, and we get plus 2 diplo rep. I am a great power. Can I force you to break your alliance with Beyond Fang? No. No, I cannot. Amy's 86. Uh, Polaris, you are up. Wow, okay. Four, five, six, three will be pretty sweet. I will take it. Jung Du Hu. <laughs> I think I'll break any alliances. Because I'd really rather not fight Fight 10 if I don't have to. Not because it's like they're going to be difficult to beat, but it just adds more time to the war that I don't really need. Uh, 
Again, I could just declare war on Phyton directly here. Beyond Fang will probably not join at some point. Well, Mill does get plus one maneuver. Hey, I like it. It's good. Defensive also gives us plus one maneuver as well. You are going to sit back and deal with rebels. That's your job. <clears throat> There's the cores. Cheaper diplo rep guy. 893. You are also 893? No. There we go. We could even up get, upgrade this guy to level 4. I think I will. I have the money. Come on. Break their alliances. Please. Please. <clears throat> Command's sitting at 110 discipline right now and 4.2 morale. They've gone for offensive ideas next. Great. Great. He did not break their alliances. What do you want? Yeah, you're going to want all of his land, so I'm not interested in calling you in. I'll call Buvari in, though. We'll do a reconquest for Lem Hong. I'm definitely not interested in having my ally take my stuff. Now, he also has a sick uh, three-star general, but it's a six fire. I mean, we still take damage, though. We still do be kobolds. Let's get to work on this level three coastal fort. Be fine. Don't need all of our troops here. In fact, we don't need most of our troops on this siege. We can send them over to this province. Three favors. I have 98 favors with them. Our military is much larger, so we just get them naturally. Yeah, push you on autonomous. So I don't keep forgetting to convert things. I don't want to keep forgetting. Core those three provinces up. 477. Which turns into 492. Just below. We need 500 crowns for the next mission. I can build a couple of manpower. Not manpower. Governing capacity buildings. Reign of Zelda interlude. DMCA has been sent. Damn, it's over. Ooh, restrict. That's huge. That's actually massive. That's going to help us against the command so much. Because now I can have like 105 discipline and more morale. Yeah, still garbage ruler, don't get me wrong, but less painful garbage. I'm going to push forward because I don't trust that Chen Benrung won't declare their war. He's definitely moving to do something. I just don't know what it is. I would rather him not snipe my hard work. We are fighting the rest of Yanchen. Uh, yeah, let's go after that siege now. I think that'll be a decent idea. No, Phyton doesn't have a war wizard. It's just a decent general. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. 
Bum, bum, bum. All right, Kellen, will you go away? No. You will not. You know what I should probably do? Is call Chin Bang Rung into the war now. To make sure he has a truce with all the people that I'm at war with so he can't keep expanding. I'm such a good ally. I truly am one of the most allies of all time, you could say. Killed your allies army? Yeah, that was kind of the point. I don't want my allies army to be doing well. I don't want them to die by any means. But I don't want them to keep expanding either. I want to contain them as much as possible. i bring you guys back into our territory. Uh, you can skip this siege actually. You guys can actually go here. Loot. Cobalt old. Hey, they live longer now. They live to like 125. So that's pretty good. Who needs enemies when you have allies like Poet? That's right. That's right. They don't need anybody else, just me. If your ally doesn't expand, they don't get unrest. Saves their lives. True. We're actually, we're the good guys. We are the good guys. We are helping people out. It's that easy. <laughs> trust, trust, trust. Don't think about it too hard. Just believe me. I would never lie. Never. Never, ever, ever. Combine there. <clears throat> okay, Arakellen will peace out. I honestly just want Arakellen out of this war. I don't really care about anything else. Thank you. The Mad Seer. I'm not losing 50 admin points. Thank you, though. Thank you for the offer. As for what I want to do to fight 10... I could force him to return the cores to Tian Lu. He is 68 war score with two provinces. I thought it capped out at 30. Trade power, great projects, size. It's a temple complex. Never mind. I'm I'm not giving you anything. Dev does. Oh, the just the development. Okay. Well, I do want to take Tian Lu for myself, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, let's have Five Ten give me their trade power, their money. Give me pillage their capital. Steal their development and take it back to our mountain. Like a real kobold. The Last Dragon Dance. With both clans agreeing that the current system of military potentially going through a major overhaul every 10 years is unmaintainable, they decided to make this dragon dance the last one, whatever that may implicate. As the fight started, it was unclear who would win. As it continued, the two bloodied sages began losing steam. In the end, they shook claws and stopped fighting. And everybody clapped. They were homies. until the end of the game. We want 5% of everything? Yeah, we'll do that. And everybody clapped because we were all friends. Arrogant administrators. Cool. Thank you, administrators, for being arrogant. Appreciate it. You will give me your war reps. Your manpower. Not man, I just meant development. Man, I'm struggling today. Take them out. Uh, Sally Joel, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. There is Phyten's next fort, so now I can pillage their capital. Take five development back to my capital. Thank you. 
And beyond Feng, I would like you to return all provinces that belong to Ziyu Zhut back to them. I would like to take max money, and I would like to take more reps. I can't actually afford to take any of their land currently. I don't have the governing capacity to do that. That being said, it would be nice to own this province. And this province. It'd be nice to own all their provinces, actually. But it would cost me a lot of Diplo to take. And I'm trying to finish influence ideas here. My vassal's claims. Uh, I do have one claim. It still cost me Diplo, though. I, I don't think it's worth it. No, it is worth it. Because then it makes them one war. And then I want you to cancel your vassal here. It also costs Diplo, but then they're at least independent, so I can full annex Beyond Fang. That gives me time to make a bunch of claims on them, on these high development provinces, so it's not as expensive. And then I'll take money. There we go. That works. Now I can ask my ally to return. So got, did he lose his cores? Actual L moment. Oh, I could have taken this for 510 too. Actual L moment. Uh, okay. You guys go there. You guys go there. Command is going to attack lots to Kong. Okay. Seize Crownland. We lost a bunch of claims. Start building a spy network up on Beyond Fang, please. And let's go and tell the teaming arm that they can set up their headquarters. With our hold over southern Unbesku now secure and only influence over the region in decline, the hills around Kibir Garko are experiencing a massive economic boon. Bike lane and gold scale miners are swarming into the city, each hoping to stake a claim of their own in the mineral rich countryside. Meanwhile, the sudden overabundance of ores and rough gems has overwhelmed the logistics of the local smiths and jewelers. The teaming arms seek our permission to construct an expansive storage and administrative facility to centralize control and bring some semblance of order to the area's affairs. Yes. Please do that. And now, depletion chance is zero. So we can just develop this like crazy if we so wanted to. I don't think we do because I want to finish influence ideas very badly. Very, very badly. Uh, another thing I can do, though, is I can get access. I think I already have access, actually, through my ally. I do not. Okay, close all the tabs, please. Come on. Thank you. Then I need six infantry. Can I send more? Does sending more do anything? There, right there. There, there, and there. Okay. Thank you for your service, troops. You're probably going to disappear. Okay, let's start making claims on the command. I'm going to want the dames tier, and I'm going to want the gold, and I'm going to need Zhao Do. All things that I must have. Alright, that is a bunch of troops surrounding the Foucault range, so let's complete the Foucault expedition. After the disappointment following the thorough search of the, even the most northern mountaintop of the Ogre Hills, the well of ideas has run dry. To the west lie the inhospitable lands of the hobgoblins, and to the north, a mountain range of so unscalable only a very stubborn species of goat appears to call it home. The way forward was unclear, until the idea to send a small party, be they hired adventurers or government employees, to the nearby climbable mountains and hills. Most of these were manageable, but the Focal range calls for a military-style sweep. Focal expedition happens in one year. Only goats, and like, 12 tags. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. Then I'll need a bunch of money and manpower for that one. I'll need to do a whole bunch of development on this province too. We should probably get that focused to be our... Our conversion. So let me go to the auto converter and take it off the auto convert. That way I can convert this really quick. Okay. And then our enforcement is now 89. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, I will join you. I need to bring my troops back. <laughs> run, little guys, run! Oh yeah, no, I, I understand this war. And I understand I don't want to touch it, because that's going to cost me all my manpower. I've done that one before. No thanks. I'm good. Go ahead and drill. I don't know if you're such a godsend. It is. It's 8.30 a.m. so off to sleep. Alright, have a good sleep. And thank you for your service, Amy. Finally died. Finally kicked the bucket. That was it for Amy Claire Rose. Died at like, how long? It was 54? So... I didn't do one early. I know, I skipped you because you already had a general still. Plus, I didn't ask for him yet. But thank you for your service. You're like 90. Okay. I'll get you your other one. Boom. That's like the exact same thing, isn't it? It's a little bit better, I think. Is it just the same? We've done it. Reincarnated. We've done it, boys. We've done necromancy. Ooh, I did not mean to take that cannon. You go over there. Alright, you get to drilling. You move up here. Alright, does anybody else want a general? Ogre minister. I will... Take a cheaper advisor. Lord. Those are actually the same stats because of you drilling and improving me. Interesting, 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 interesting. Uh, Earth Towers, you are up first. Let's see what you've got. We have 92 Army Tradition. We have plus two from our religion, so you should be rather good. Let's see, you're what? Three, 12, that's 17 pips that Amy got. 17 is not max, though. <clears throat> you rolled 15, and you got an extra plus 2, right? Let's see what you get, Earth Towers. Okay. So you were a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, plus 4, max is 21. Alright, we're looking for a 21 pip general. Alright, PLP, boom! Not 21, but you do have 6 shock, so that's pretty good. Uh, and Nurkor also wanted one. This round. Last one. Someone's going to get fired, though. Someone's going to get fired. Ooh, that's pretty good. 15. It's another 17, but it's a 4, 6, 5, 2. Uh, I'm sorry, Earth Towers. Thank you for your service. you got to go back to officer school. Keep me in. Well, you're staying in because you've got better stats. you got better pips. That's it. That's the only reason. <laughs> Not more complicated than that. You've got the better pips, so you stay in. <laughs> I get pension. <laughs> you came in, you're like, yep, I'm a general. And you're like, ooh, someone's got to go. I volunteer, but you have to fire me. <laughs> you have to fire me. I need the money. Thank you. Have a nice day. Get your bag. Time for offensive ideas. Young dude would be proud. Uh, yeah, we're not quite to the all sixes category, but we're getting close. Another influence idea. Less liberty desire from subject development. There we go. 
Lan Xin Hui is pretty much completely loyal at this point. 2,195 develop. I don't know if we're ever going to annex that vassal. You know how rifles shoot. <laughs> you go, I'm going to just go back to school or something. I'm going to go for early retirement. <clears throat> we go speed five. The Focal Expedition. When the report of the Focal Mountain Range Sweep came in, we could read from their faces that they found nothing good. But we didn't expect them to have found so much death. Even with dwarven guides, climbing gear, and mages capable of bending rock, we still lost over 3,000 lives. Nothing of note was found atop the mountains. The best find of the entire expedition was a dwarf guide named Guntier Goldsmith, who could do magic tricks with coins. What a waste of resources. We lose 3,400 manpower and 300 crowns, but Guntier Goldsmith comes to work for us. He's 50% cheaper to employ. It's not a half price trade efficiency guy, though. So you guys can be level 5. If I had a half price advisor that I could upgrade, that'd be great. But you're Nemijet, which I do not have accepted, and I don't think I will. Yeah, it's not for a while, at least. We could go for state firearm regiments for more army drill gain modifier. Make it to where we drill pretty much immediately. I never use it. I never use it. We're going to use it. I'm clicking the button. State firearm regiments. Boom. Look at that. I can't believe it. it cost me like three ducats a month, but... We go from 1.24 gain to... 1.58 gain. Huge. <laughs> Massive. Returning civil servants. Over the last few months, the civil servants and spies have been sent out towards the various mountains of Aless are trickling back into Balriza. Most just shake their head at the guards and head for home or a tavern, but one of them can hardly contain their excitement. A woman belonging to the Knowing Eye clan claims to have found a substantial piece of the puzzle. Luca of the Knowing Eye was sent to the province of Taragata, deep within Hobgoblin territory. That's where she managed to bribe herself into speaking with one of the goblin clans of the province. When asking if one of them had ever seen a great golden beast, an old goblin responds not with an answer, but a tale. In this clan, there exists a profession called Nuborudu, a high miner. They go up the Jade Mountains as far as they can go, on ancient goblin paths carved up through centuries and along ropes thrown up with hooks, looking for ore and other valuables. This man used to be a Nubor Nuborudu himself in his younger years until an injury prevented him from going up there. He recalls a story told to him by the generation of Nobarudu before him, a warning to not get too high lest you draw the attention or draw in the ire of Zlatuzazin, the golden burner, a great flying golden beast which burns any who dare come close. Balris, they saw Balris. Large tolerance increase of goblins and we get 5% morale armies for Balris optimism. Now we can complete the Nephrite contacts. We need to be either allied with Virgil Ozevar, or we need to be allied with the province owner. Whilst the Focal range might not have led to finding Balris, our usage of Dwarven Mountain Guides and our purchasing of supplies and climbing equipment have fostered a positive, in bold, relationship between us and the Dwarves. Returning officials can talk for hours on end about their grand hold, impressive architecture, beards, beer, and knowledge about mountain living. Perhaps it is time we invited some of them for a visit. The Nephrite delegation happens. The caravan is finally here. A delegation of dwarves has arrived in Balriza to see local sites, improve relations, and strike trade deals. While none of our monuments are quite as impressive as Virgil Ozevar itself, they are still distinct enough. They are still distinct enough to fill up a day of touring. Especially Balkangfa Palace is well liked for its expansive size and serene energies. When the dwarves leave, we have not only made some trade deals but also some friends. Short folk unite. <laughs> we add a dwarven minority size to our capital. We gain two base production. There's a 50% chance that we gain dwarves elsewhere, and our capital gets dwarven architects until the end of the game. Give me minus 25% local construction cost, and minus 10% local great project upgrade cost. And we get Kozen Gembeard to join our court, minus 10% stab cost, and 50% cheaper to employ. Now I need 500 monies. The dwarves in the Nephrite hold. I mean, they're there. They're there. 
Uh, there are three nations in I use the drill game with. Otto, so my Janissaries can permanent assault walls replenish. goes faster, since they were less casualties. Prussia for militarization, and Austria playing the difficult game, and armies stand idle. That's fair. Most of the time, I'm also not drilling. Uh, just because of the way that I played the game, with blobbing. It's usually not worth it to drill. This guy is definitely half off. He's 459. I'm not going to upgrade him, though, for now, because I need the money. Could sell titles, but don't need to do that. There we go. Now we can do the Jade Mountains. We need to own Corvala, Jawagoka, or a Torosol, which I'm pretty sure it's just these three. Yeah, it's one of these three provinces. There are trolls in Northern Hales now. Uh, it's called... It's called Gozengun. Thank you very much. That's mostly... I have to keep saying it, otherwise I'll never remem remember it. Oh, the north of... Oh, you're talking about in the valley? Uh, Alright, the Jade Mountains. Climb in the Jade Mountains! You folk are insane! That's not doable! An Ephrite Dwarf, who climbs Focal for fun? <laughs> we have to do it. And we will. We lose 500 grounds, crowns, gain 2 inflation, lose 100 military power, 5,000 manpower is gone... The event of the Jade Mountain Expedition will happen, and we get fledgling expedition until the end of the game. We have minus 12 yearly tax income, minus 0.1 yearly inflation reduction, minus 10% manpower recovery speed, minus 10% admin efficiency, and minus 10% governing capacity modifier. The last search. That's how it's being promoted to the folks at home. Will not be easy. We have guides from the Goblin Clans that spotted Zlatu Zazen and from the Nephrite Dwarves who have proven capable mountaineers, along with an exhaustive assortment of mages, miners, and logistical staff. The plan is simple. Start from the northern edge of the Ogre Hills and seek out every peak along the way to the peak that Zlatu Zazen is said to patrol, right above Gronstanad. Easier said than done. As the planning phase comes to an end, the clergy demands a larger contingent, claiming that they carry the most important task of all, convincing Balvis we have remembered his teachings. The expedition command, however, says that there are too many civilians in the expedition as is. Any more would only cause problems. I say we placate the clergy. They are kind of correct. Like, I know that, you know, they might be annoying, but they are correct. Uh, tier 6, secularization. I don't care about maximum tolerance of heretics or heathens. And I also don't claim I'm absolutism, but I guess we take absolutism because I don't need the tolerance. It's just not, it's not useful. It does not do anything for us. Uh, we are probably over our governing capacity at this point. Yes, we are because we've lost some. Something to keep in mind. But we just kind of sit here and wait while the expedition goes on. Then money, so we have to conclude the Jade Mountain stuff. Ooh. Okay, grab the trade efficiency, get him to level two, grab the yearly inflation guy, and we're gonna get the event. Here we go. Radical reforms, it's time. It's time for the radical reforms. Radical reforms. Still waiting for radical reforms. Still waiting. Still waiting. <laughs> Still waiting. Radical reform these nuts. Got him. Uh, does improve low tolerance help with production values in provinces? No, because it only increases the maximum you have. It's not increasing the actual tolerance. Just the maximum. Want to play Imperator? Crash the desktop in five minutes. PDX knows you should just watch me instead. That's true. Or do both. You can listen to me in the background while you play. Is that Jad or the other one? Nope, that's Jad. Mm hmm. Feels right. Uh, the first mountaintop. The expedition is chugging along all right, with the first top, the one above Malachi Respite, already being in sight. The foothills of the Jade Mountain, many of which are already larger than the Dragon Peak back in Balriza, now lie behind the spearhead of the expedition, and the terrain has become a bare, craggy land, sharply ridged and steeply gorged. 
As a small part of the digging and rigging crews break off of the main one, heading to the peak of the world objective, the smaller contingent works its way up to the first peak, looking for clues. They find nothing but tired backs, the common cold, and sprained ankles. No one expected to find Balrus on this mountaintop, though, but it would have been nice to find a clue. Plant a flag, and keep marching. The jelly? Yeah, it's the jelly. What, some normal reforms? <sighs> normal reforms are so boring, though. You want to be radical. I need to make sure that I'm making claims. So that way when I do eventually go to war with these guys, we can actually, you know, be useful. Alright, we're at 90. Come on, it's still at 25. Next tech puts it up by 2, though. Hey, you... Please don't call me into your wars. I'll max out my trust with you, but leave me alone. Two. One, two. One, two. Then we'll have three full fighting stacks with the ability to do some sieging with little cannons. When is the command war? I think after this event chain is done, then we're going to be good to go for this command war. Uh, Hugh Guai. Local leaders in Andoros Huro have been sharing reports and rumors about a peculiar creature, a monkey man hybrid, that has been sighted coinciding with the unexplained disappearances of individuals who ventured out at night. According to a local hunter who claims to have survived an encounter with this hybrid, it hides behind foliage, using an irresistible smile to lure its victims closer. Once within reach, the creature swiftly strikes its victims with a rock, dragging the bodies away, leaving no trace behind. Attempts to eliminate it using conventional weapons such as spears, swords, or arrows have proven futile as they seem unable to harm the creature in any way. The hunter referred to this entity as the Hyo Guai, translating to Ghost Monkey, and the local community implores Undoroshuro Undoroshuro to take action. The mages have identified it as a spirit, advising that spirit hunters, though expensive, should be engaged with the situation if resolution is desired. Uh, yeah, I don't care. Sorry. We call it all the lesson there. Yep, that's the that's the plan. In fact, I do need to turn this off of don't call me into your wars, and I need to start currying favors with everybody. If I actually want to call everybody in, which I do... Then I gotta put in the work. Put in the work. Curry the favors. Make sure the relationships are all improved. Get ready though. I kind of want to want to be one the command still. But is bruh Praxis? They sure are. Yeah, High Philosophy's having a rough time right now. A very rough time. Expedition Troubles. Uh, as the expedition continues to work slowly... As the expedition continues to work slowly towards its way, what's now being called Ballers' Rest, the highest peak of the Jade Mountains, the front of the expedition keeps getting harder to resupply as it works its way through. It now takes a full week for reinforcements, equipment, or rations to reach the front from the back, putting a huge strain on logistics. The expedition leaders have sent word for aid. They'll manage, or they can have increased funding. We roll the dice on losing the stability, but isn't that better than losing the money? This feels like a trap. Should I just give them the increased funding? I'd have to take loans. I don't want to risk it by not giving them money and then something actually going wrong that I can't see. So we're going to go indebted and increase the funding. We can always sell titles later on if we need to make the money back. We can always just dev the gold mine. That's true. Other places that we need to develop first, but... That's true. 
Also, our inflation is going to be out of control at this point. Oof. Oof. You get back to drilling. We can get everyone full drilled up, then we'll be good for the command war. No, I do think we actually go to war to call everybody in against the command, because... In order to get the war score that we need, to truly be able to piece him out, we're going to need to occupy all of his territory. And I don't think I'll be able to do that with only 90,000 troops. Do you wonder why the expedition gets inflation? I think it's because you're supposed to be sending like most of your population to go and, and do that. And you're funding everything you have, and so the economy in your country is kind of spiraling as you do that. Uh, Shingnex Chiva. It could be seen and unfortunately smelled from a distance. A giant pile of bones, skulls, and refuse clogging up a steep valley between the previous mountain and Ballers' rest. Something big has been dumping the remainders of its dinners here, both from before and after digestion. The smell alone is unbearable. The sight is simultaneously both impressive and repulsive. The diggers have no option but to build a bridge upon it all using the large carcasses scattered across as pillars and foundation. The expedition is on the home stretch, but no one expected it to be so... Humbling. At least the end is in sight. The 150 mile long expedition. It's only going to make our country hurt more. But it's fine. It's worth it for Balrus. He'll be there. I believe. He has to be. No other option. Uh, the home stretch. Uh, the final part is by far the most dangerous of the one of the journey. Foraging a path up Balrus's rest is not only a battle against the ever-increasing steepness, but also the unceasing cold and wind. Not a day goes by without a fatality, and some days entire teams are wiped out when a foundation collapses or an avalanche pushes us back. Progress is made, however, and on the 1,000th, 155th day of the expedition, the first roar is heard. Whatever is up there, it sounds big enough to be Balrus. Days go by, and the path forged ahead gets steeper and more dangerous with every step taken. Railings made of rope, fastened with dwarven steel pins, kept most exhausted diggers from falling off, but not all. Morale was getting low, but on the 1,163rd day, he blessed the expedition with his visage. He flew over and gazed upon his golden admirers. He was unmistakably gargantuan and unquestionably gold. He was Balrus the Gold. All along the expedition, like a long line of dominoes, the gold scales fell to their feet, saying prayers, gawking at he who will return. Balrus seemed to look on with interest following the expedition trail all the way to the foot of the Jade Mountains, eventually turning around to do a double take before ascending back upon Balrus's rest, his Millennium Throne. Dig! He awaits our arrival! Dig! We're down to minus 40% governing capacity. Minus 96 yearly income. Uh, that's fine. And I will finish our influence ideas here. Boom. All hail, hail Balrus. Balrus the Eternal, Balrus the Great. Military complacency. Dog, I'm not being complacent. I'm just, I'm going to see Balrus. Chill. Explosions, air, and avalanches. As the spearhead of the expedition climbs ever higher, the terrain becomes more noticeably hostile. It's beginning harder and harder for the logistics team to ferry supplies up the increasingly steep terrain carved by wind and weather. But now, a hardness of breathing and the omnipresence of ice and snow further exasperates the struggle. As much as the logistics team struggled, doubt doubly so did the spearhead, for they had to alter the terrain and breathe the thinnest air of them all. To this end, mages have become increasingly vital for the expedition spearhead, with air being siphoned in whilst ice is molten with fire ma magic and snow displaced with thunderous claps of magic. The violence of elements and sound has proven as hostile to the mountain as the mountain has been to us, for every so often, an avalanche would cascade its way down through the mist into the nothingness. We keep going. <laughs> the command gets the event. Avalanches from above. The mages gain to influence. I'm sure they'll be fine, okay? It's just random avalanches. Don't worry about it, command. It's fine. You don't need to worry about a thing. To impress Gobbles, just catapult an oversized lizard. How dare you? How dare you? The Millennium Throne, Part 1. As the diggers foreman declared their work almost complete, hundreds of dignitaries were already bunched up behind him, eagerly inching forward. With the final strike, the tunnel's exit was sent crumbling to the ground, revealing the ancient, steep-sloped caldera-turned-layer within which Balrus lay, gently snoring. 
The clergy were the first to storm in, starting a chant that quickly drowned out the dragon snoring, entreating him to make his triumphant return to Balriza. Next came the nobility of the various warrior classes, or clans, showering Balriza's rest in a carpet of gifts as champions of the kindled scale and smoldering claw paired off to, perf to perform silent dragon dances, which demonstrated the progression of our martial arts since his departure a thousand years ago. He rose slowly, opening sleepy eyes to gaze with no small amount of surprise upon his ardent admirers and worshippers. One by one, representatives of the various clans, factions, and the Golden Sage filed into the Depression, hoping to speak to Balrus, bearing yet more gifts. Small statuettes of jade, bags of coin, ornately carved scroll cases containing calligraphied poems and declarations of his divinity. But Balrus remained ever quiet. Hours went by, and the piles of gifts grew ever larger, some almost beginning to match their enormous recipient in height, and yet still, the great dragon sage remained in resigned, somewhat confused silence. It isn't until the Musicians Guild finally had their turn to present an offering that his demeanor changed. The crowd hushed as they sent forward a single boy carrying a traditional lute. As the young virtuoso began to pluck the first notes of the song of Q, supposedly the tune played by the legendary bard and first kobold to befriend Balrus at the mouth of the Balkhengfa cave over a millennia ago. Let us hope it is enough. 15 days. He's going to play for 15 days. The Millennium Throne, part two. As the young Ludus played and sang, his expression shifted from resignation to sadness. When the boy at last put down his lute and bowed, a single tear welled and wended its way through the channels of the great worm's facial scales. After a pause, Balrus opened his mouth and began to speak. Oh my, it truly has been an age and a half since I heard that particular song, he sighed. When I left your people to discover the fate of my brethren, I had only intended to be gone for a short while. For a century or more, I soared on the winds of every sky, on tired wings, walked the streets of every city in mortal guise, searching in desperation for any clue I could. But in the end, I found that most of my kin were slain, and the trails of the rest went cold. So I gave up hope. In my despair, I retired here, resigned to the probability that I am the last of my kind. To little avail, I tried to forget Gentis's wit, a cat's passion, Alois's courage. There was... Wait, a cat's... Oh, interesting. Uh... There was a catch in the dragon sage's throat. Another tear ran down his great golden face. Then he drew in a great breath, rising to his feet, fresh snow from the previous night's storm, cascading from his colossal back and wings. All I managed to forget was the warmth and joy of my time among the gold scales. Your performance, little one, he said, smiling down at his young musician, has reminded me. Thank you, truly. Q's spirit is alive in your heart. What is your name? B Batavix, my lord, the boy stammered, shaking in the snow, but still managing to meet the worm's gaze. Well, Batavix, one cannot wallow forever, even one as long as lived as I, Balrus declared. I think it's high past time for my vigil here to end. I suppose I shall come visit. The crowd roared as Batavix was lifted up and paraded around the caldera. The cheering began working its way down Balrus's rest, infecting the kobolds below, and it was not long before the entire 170 miles of caravan knew. Balrus continued, now if you all don't mind, it's terribly early, and I'd like to sleep some more. With that said, most of the gold scales begin the arduous journey back to Balriza, pondering on how not to disappoint Balrus when he arrives. We must make ready for his return. We get Search for Balrus, Deep Optimism, 7.5% morale of armies. We get rid of the 170 mile long expedition. We gain 50 prestige, 800 splendor, and 100 devotion. We also gain Batavix Q, or Q, Heart of the Golden Tongue, a... Skill 2, 50% off, advisor. Yippee! We did it, boys. We found Balrus. He's real. He's alive. That's crazy. Okay, so Ron's dragging your boy last run? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Balrus is such what's not very good in phrase gathering. How could he miss a cat? I don't know, because there's like a bunch of dragons all over the place. We got one over here, we got like one down here, we got probably one maybe here. Of course we have the dragon over here, the dragon coast, which is definitely a dragon, 100% is definitely a dragon. Uh, there's like one over here somewhere, I think. Not here. Here, I don't know. <clears throat> there's definitely still some dragons left out there. I'm not going to be the one to tell Balrus that though. Because that means that he won't come hang out with us. Alright, Balk Ingfa Palace, 250 monies, 100 admin, 2000 manpower. If Balrus is to come home, we must ensure Bal King Fa is in a better state than ever. We cannot afford to disappoint him. To do so, however, we will first have to ensure building materials can reach the cavern more easily. As of now, the path is far too steep for any caravan. Gain one inflation, lose 100 mil power, 1000 manpower, 250 crowns, 
and we get a new event. If we are to renovate Belkingfa Palace in a timely fashion, we will need to improve the infrastructure going from Belriza proper to Belkingfa to allow for more and heavier traffic. This will include paving roads, constructing a lift, and strengthening the bridges. All right, we get to the end of the game in our capital minus 10% local construction cost and minus 10% local great project upgrade cost. So now it costs 873 to upgrade this thing. And if I go ahead and get rid of our inflation, then it costs 800. Okay. Let's build the workshop here. Say inflation? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of it. We're, we're gold scale kobolds. That's what we do. It's what we do. Right, I don't remember how much longer this mission tree is. But I do know that we do have to fight the command here. Ooh, we need to do some development here. We need a marketplace here. We need Diplo power. We need a lot of Diplo. We need a lot of Diplo. I need this guy to die. Even though he is kind of useful. Really long? Okay. I don't know what that means, though. <laughs> but I'll take your word for it. You're a bit over 50%. Okay, good to know. We can have a hundred troops. So we're going to build up to 10,000 cannons in this stack. Uh, you stop drilling. A lot of particularists. A lot of particularists. Alright, we have the favors with Rajnahaga that we need. And with everybody else. So if I declared war here, I could call on everybody. So the question is, do we go for anti monstrous or do we go for claims? I think we go for claims. I don't trust my allies enough to think that they won't tank my war score by taking bad fights. I don't trust them. Not one bit. So what I need to do is hire a discipline guy. I need to get rid of leadership of martial heroes, implement martial arts for the peasantry, and we can go for the merc one if we end up needing it. We're not fully drilled everywhere, but we are in a pretty good spot. At least I think so. We take tech. We have a tech 11 advantage over his tech 9 advantage. I can't convert anybody. So I can't start my golden age. Okay, now here's the problem. No, no problems. Okay. I just need to make sure that my allies are like super clear that I want Zhao Do. There's nothing more important to me than me getting Zhao Do at the moment. Okay? That's all that matters. And like Yanshin, but I don't really care about claiming that. I just want to make sure they know. I need Zhao Do. <laughs> very badly. Very, very badly. This is all vital interest to me. Nobody else gets it, just me. You guys can occupy whatever else you want. I don't care. We got the perfect, we got concrete music on. We got troops ready to go. We're basically at max manpower here, 61,000. Command has 95,000 manpower and 127,000 troops, but I don't care. We are kobolds. And kobolds take the W's. We have found Balris. Like, we need to make sure he's ready to come back. In order to do that, for some reason, I have to go and take Zhao Do. Don't ask too many questions, okay? 
And I have to do some Diplo development up here, apparently. So we can go ahead and expand infrastructure there. Uh, I need to give out this. I need more governing capacity. You are coupled with friends. True, with friends. I don't have to demonsterize or any of that. All right, declare the war for Gianuxi. He took loans to embrace the institution, I think. Well, I'm not paying off his loans, so. Here we go. We do it live. Now, Polaris Northstar, you are a three siege general, which is perfect. Move forward. I want to use Junt to focus on just sieging things down. Okay, so let's take a look at our quality comparison with the command. We have a lot more morale than they do. And they have 5% discipline on us. We have equal defensiveness. They have more professionalism, so they're not going to run out of manpower in this war. <sighs> they don't have as much siege ability as we do, surprisingly. But they are taking offensive ideas, so that could change. So Buvari has more morale. Rajnahaga is going to get obliterated in this war. They have a lot of discipline, but I don't think it's going to matter. still think they're going to get obliterated. Uh, that's a problem I didn't really think about. So the command's going to just immediately walk over onto my provinces. So you guys are heading north. Congratulations. Are you... You cheaters. I literally just moved my troops back one province. They're like, nah, scatter boys. We got to get out of here. Like, what? No, that's fine. I don't have to go up there then. You cheating AI. You think I don't know? You think I don't see you cheating? Thanks for fighting my rebels. Appreciate it. We do need to start upgrading this great project. Yes. Yes. Flood in, my friends. Overwhelm the command. They simply don't know what hit them. The command thought I wasn't declaring war on them because I was scared. Incorrect. I was just giving them a chance to be better. That's not true. It's because I was busy. But they don't know that. Is Lan Shen Hui going to hit him? He might. Well, he definitely chased him off the siege. Now, the one thing I don't want to do is take bad sieges where he can contest me. That is a pretty good fight for us. He has no general here. This is our 3-5 general, so it's not our best combat general out there, but it will do. 1.7 morale difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. Only losing 4,000 troops? Oh, and that general got disciplined? Nice. Only losing 4,000 troops against the Commander's Kobolds is pretty good. I'll be bold enough to say it. I think that's pretty good. And apparently we fought him again. He just retreated. Big, big bang. Now, I don't know how much we want to take in this war... Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
Just as long as I get Zhao Dou, that's all that matters to me. That's literally it. Uh, you go take this siege so it goes faster. Okay. Thank you. I do need to fight them at some point, I think. <clears throat> well, really what I need to do is carpet siege all this. So I think that's what you're going to do. I'm going to hope that the command doesn't have anybody down here hiding. I'm going to be very sad. Very sad if they're down here hiding. So to keep an eye on it. Seems that we're good. Awesome. And then we'll just push back up into him. Age ability. I guess we can make Merc cheaper. In case we hire him. No, it doesn't make him cheaper. It makes him have more discipline. Oh no, it's different. Right. This is adventure loyalty. Another additional leader and cheaper leader cost. I mean, that's fine too. Forgot. They can't have Merc discipline in there like that. Because, you know, halflings. <laughs> you want to buff halflings too much. Don't want to be too strong. We're going to have to do a halfling run again at some point. Because it's been a while since we played as halflings. To really test out their merc changes. I don't know. I don't know which halfling I'd play as though. Is the thing. Is command you taking out command? Yeah. They're kind of weak. Well they're not weak. But they're not going to be able to deal with being completely surrounded. They're going to get distracted. Uh, check out the Vizimbi. That's true. We could go check out the island halflings. That's a good point. We have not played them yet. We can start down with the cloves and use the money from the cloves to hire mercenaries and go destroy a bunch of people on the, the continent. This could be interesting. I've done a Vizwall campaign before. It wasn't streamed though, so I mean, I'd be willing to do it again. Uh, it's, it's not that crazy though. I did it South Vizwall. But I guess if you put in the caveat that you can't have Gawed support your independence, that would make it more difficult. So maybe that's what I would do if we did a Vizimbi run. Or not a Vizimbi, uh, Vizwall run. Because I would be like, yeah. We'll do it, but the command can't, or the Gwed can't help me. Should make it much more difficult. That's great as Gnome. I know. There's like the new artificery stuff I gotta interact with too, and of course the best person to check that out with is the Gnomes. We lost a lot of troops in that fight. View, walk up here. We're at thirty percent war score, huh? I mean, he has taken a bunch of Rajahaga stuff out, but I don't really care if Rajahaga gets separate pieced out. Doesn't really matter to me. Forty four six technology is something else. D can you get access to the? Well, I guess if you, everybody starts off with artificer capacity, right? Is that what I heard? Was that correct? Because if everybody starts off with Artificer Capacity, then, yeah, that's kind of nuts. But jellyfish balloons? I know, I know, but we're, well, I mean, we were talking about halflings, and then we got distracted by the gnomes. Those freaking gnomes, man. They're always scheming. They always make the conversation about them. Can't let your guard down even for a second. Gnomes will get you. Yeah, I definitely want to siege this first, then we can go to this siege. I'm definitely not helping Buvari there. You need to make your way down, though. Okay, he's got everybody right here. He's gonna go try and unseat his capital. And I'm kind of willing to let him do that. 
it's not all that big of a deal. I can just re-siege it. And we're taking these sieges in like two months, so it's not all that crazy. Uh, you just switch 50 gamma farm, you get 50 base, and then gain additional by researching stuff before 1650. I mean, hey, at least you can interact with Artificery before the late game. That I mean, that's a great change. That was always my biggest complaint about Artificery, is that you don't get to interact with it until late game. But if you get to interact early, that's cool. Why would you want to fight gnomes when you have jellyfishes? Uh, because they don't have to fight the command. I think it's a pretty good reason. Um, yeah, that's it, actually. That's, that's all of the ideas I need. Only reason. I've lost 36,000 troops to attrition. Like, I could have played it a little bit safer, but... Fear. Fear of attracting command stacks to fight. No command, but you do get Laurent. Yeah, but Laurent's fine. Laurent runs out of manpower. Laurent has... You know, Laurent sucks, don't get me wrong, but it's not the command. Let's make you the front line. Switch you around. Because these troops are more drilled, so I want them to be the engagers. Now, we are losing quite a bit of war score. Seven from... Rajahaga being occupied. Uh, Kiesler, thank you for the 11 months. Appreciate it. Kobolds go bird. They do. They do. All right, what do we want to do here? I kind of want to go contest these 20,000 troops. No general is pretty good person to go fight. I want you to go siege this. Okay, never mind. He has a lot of guys down here. Go north, then. Take that Diplotech. Okay. I guess, actually, we're going to fight these guys. Fair enough. Oh, they didn't even get this. Look at that. They're going to beeline back towards the war goal. Do I just take Zhao Do and walk away? Like, if I take Zhao Do, I can go all the way down to this mission, basically. And I'm going to get a CB to break the command apart. Oh, the Kobolds we've been watching yet? They don't. It's not that we need it. It's that the, the main way to complete that mission is to be allied with the owner of Zhao Do. But, of course... In what universe does anyone but the command own Zhao Do by this point in the game? I, I don't know. Like, they just die to the command. Literally every time. So, can't really do much about that. I think I just take it. I can take one less province and take war reps, and we just walk away. I get the war reps. I get the province. I don't lose my allies. You know, not every war is a death war, I suppose. Yeah, I take the gold and the dames tier. So that's pretty nice. Core all up like that. And we can complete a whole bunch of missions. I hope you are all ready for some reading. Yippee. Alright, that gets that done much faster. Alright, Xiaodo Martial Art Temple. Hydrate, hydrate. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna pre. 
pretty drink of water in. <clears throat> so as the Smoldering Claw and the Kindle Scale clans continue to vie for key positions in our military through the reborn tradition of dragon dances, their champions and sages hone their skills not only on the hilltops of Balriza, but also in the schools of Zhao Do. But whilst they come to learn, some stay to teach, so much so that Kobold, the Kobold District in the city now boasts its own martial arts school, where Claws, Scales, Independents, and members from minor martial Kobold clans all teach their arts. The next step would be to unify these schools into one large complex, on which our state can exert its influence more easily. Zhao Dou gains a Kobold minority size, we gain one base manpower in the province. For 20 years, we get minus 10% mil tech cost and 5% army tradition from battles. And we also get that. They would have also gotten it, but we get it twice. Huge. It doesn't stack, though. Uh, the Jerkwood, thank you for the 23 months. Prime 7, appreciate it. Uh, okay, forming the orders. M. Golu and Yin Shang are owned by us in our core provinces. That's, <laughs> that's this province right here. Uh, something that we have owned for quite some time. Yinsheng is... Who's Yinsheng? I don't know where Yinsheng is. Oh, it's right next to it. Nope, that's not you. Right here. It's these two. We've been dragging insects in years. I know, because we weren't able to complete the mission because the command owned Zhao Do too fast for us to do it. I, I think there might be a chance you might be able to do it in time, but I didn't focus on it, and so we lost it. Uh, after yet another clash between claws and scales in the capital, accompanied with over a dozen hospitalizations, the Sage Council has decided to enact a policy of geographical distancing. The two clans are to start moving their training facilities to the countryside to ensure youth brimming with vigor but lacking in discipline stop breaking each other's kneecaps over who has the best fighting style. To this end, we must ensure ample space is available for them to settle. Smoldering Claw and Kindle sc Scale clans are now organized enough to warrant a headquarters. Gain 100 military points. Human auxiliaries, we are at least Miltech 6. We are Miltech 11. Shows you how far behind we are. Uh, human tolerance is at least integrated, and we've accepted two human cultures. Uh, as our military has come more active over the last few decades, reforms have been implemented to modernize our military. One branch, which we have only recently started to really take seriously, is the idea of cavalry. Combat on horseback, or even on terror birds for that matter, has always been difficult for us kobolds due to being vertically challenged. As such, it is only logical that we supplement our kobold infrastructure with partially human cavalry to facilitate this trustworthy human subjects will be needed. To the end of the game, we get 10% cav combat ability, and we unlock the Golden Lancers Mercenary Company. And now I need to implement both of these guys' headquarters. So this needs five base... Manpower. Hold on, let me just get rid of these edicts before I forget. And two. And Smoldering Claw also needs one, two, three. And it costs military points, so I can do this immediately. So Yin Cheng gets the Kindled Scale Headquarters. Once the ceremonial life wards of the Dragon Sage, the steadfast fighters of the Kindled Scale turn their focus towards the defense of Balriza from external threats following the Great Worm's departure nearly 1,000 years ago. As we have expanded our territory, these stalwart defenders have taken on the responsibility of protecting all cities within our realm. With the seizure of the major mountain passes at Jishik and Chesheng Yik, they are proposing the creation of a mighty fortress at Yin Cheng, from which they can better intercept any incursions from the Nugden Sarai to our north. To the end of the game, we get plus 1,000 manpower increase, minus 10% fort maintenance, 0.1 trade value, and 1% nobility loyalty equilibrium. They do gain 5% crown land, though. Ooh, this is going to kill our crown land. <clears throat> oh, well. Uh, as we push westward and expand our territory, the battlefields on which we fight are growing increasingly distant from Balriza. The offense-minded Smoldering Claw Clan, historically based in a small fort at the foot of our mountain capital, have expressed a desire to be located closer to our future war fronts and ask for permission to construct a new fortress monastery in Emogolu to serve as their headquarters. This province gets the same thing, but we get 5% shock damage, and we gain a castle there, and we lose 5% crown land. Uh, rippy, rippy dippy for our crown land, but well worth it, I think. 
Uh, I can build the Golden Highway. I need to take another couple of provinces off of the Unfang. Then I can build it. We're probably make sure Vassal stays loyal. Uh, yeah, barely. Barely, barely, barely. All right, a new status quo. The headquarters have been established. The sixth dragon dance has been concluded. And we own a bunch of provinces, three provinces, and they are our cores. It's also talking about this one. It wants us to put another group in here, but I don't necessarily want to do that. All right, a new status quo. With the rivalry between the Claws and the Scales de-escalated, our realm can finally finish its military reforms. A new system is to be implemented where the Sages or their champions will no longer fight for military office, but rather divide the decision-making along offensive and defensive lines. The new system may not be perfect, but it is ours. And in 1533, we're making trench warfare. Let's go, boys. Uh, for 30 years, we get 2.5% discipline and 0.3 yearly army professionalism. And until the end of the game, we get military two-clan system. 2.5% discipline, minus 10% movement speed, minus 25% military advisor cost. Oof. I hate losing movement speed. And now I need to do a bunch of development in this province. Which is fine. I mean, that will help us, I suppose, getting our crown land back. So I guess that's good. Looking at the positives. So you are on rebel duty. Congratulations. I know. Everybody's favorite job. You guys get to drilling. So this needs to finish. We'll need to cast Magnificent Feasts through the mages. It's not too bad. I'd much rather keep Uvari as a rival, or as an ally. Speaking of that, if I want to keep them, then I need to increase our trust. Uh, the craving of the caterpillar in our capital, no less. Many cultures speak of a spirit or ghost that leads people, especially men, to their doom. One such a lessy legend is that of Malkoknu, short for the good caterpillar lady. The uh, Malkok. Malkonu is a malicious spirit who ensnares married men with her singing and lures them into the forest, never to be seen again. It remains unclear whether they are consumed or used for procreation. However, what is known is that to men, she appears as a beautiful singing lady, while to unmarried men and women, she takes on the form of a gigantic screeching caterpillar with the face of an old hag. In a village in Balriza, the Malkonu has struck, causing a disaster. It all began with a night of disappearances when over 20 men vanished from their homes, walking straight across the rice fields and into the local forest while calling for the good lady. A few people attempted to stop them, but as they neared the forest of the Malkonu, the faint screeching turned into loud and unbearable screams. The following morning, a search party was dispatched. They scoured the forest but found no trace of the spirit or the missing men. Only after hours of searching did they stumble upon something, a small cape. Inside, they discovered bones clad in torn clothing covered with what seemed to be wet silk string. They left the cave hastily but took some of the cloth as evidence. Upon returning to the village, their suspicions were confirmed. The clothing belonged to some of the husbands. With no trace of the husbands other than the cave's findings, the village sought help from the state. The local governor dispatched a small group of soldiers to investigate the cave further. While they did not find more clothing and bones, they found no living soul or any trace of Makonu. At a loss for what to do next, the local governor reached out to us to deliver the news and inquire if monetary support for the widows is possible. Although highly unusual, the governor deems it necessary as the village lost a significant portion of its working population to the spirit. Everybody loving the Ketter Pussy. Yeah, if you said that to like a medieval peasant in like 13th century England, they would not even begin to know how to understand the words you just said out loud. It's not possible. And if you did try to explain it to them, they may just have a heart attack from shock. Uh, you want to see the mercs? Here they are. It is 5 cavalry with 35% cav combat ability, 10% shock damage, 10% movement speed, and minus 10% shock damage received. Honestly, not bad all in all. A little expensive. 391. They're 40% cheaper? I mean, the local adventures have cost 554, and they give you way more troops. 
I'm just saying. But if you just want some cav for your army, they are probably your best bet. <clears throat> are probably your best bet. Yeah, I'm really feeling the uh, terrible ruler stats now. We're really feeling it. I'm not able to get enough monarch points to do development for this mission. And now I need to wait a super long time for the merchants to be loyal again. Also, did I agree to convert a... High Philosophy Province. Yep. Oops. My bad. My bad. We can get rid of this. I have to keep this. Unfortunately. Maybe Balrus will teach us how to do economy better. That'd be nice. Balrus, please teach these kobolds how to simply save money and not have crazy amounts of inflation. Ooh! They changed the icon for Dames here. I like it. Interesting. Alright. Can I get more claims? I sure can. There you go. Oh, they changed it for Precursor Relics as well. Oh, okay. Convert to Critical Religion. Mr. Awesome this one, two, three, four moment. <laughs> True. Definitely a Mr. Awesome this moment. 100%. Let's pay off our loans when we can. The Northwest. Ooh. That's fancy. That's super fancy. I like that. You said they changed Mithril? Did they change Mithril? I don't know if they changed Mithril. I mean, I had heard they changed the other two. I, hey, look. You, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this absolute gamer move? Boom. Boom. They did change Mithril. You are correct. It has more of a bluish hue to it. Uh-oh. Okay. It fixed itself. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, tweet the releaser of bumblebees. The province of Yinsheng is in ecstasy after a swarm of friendly bumblebees paid them a visit. The little critters have diligently pollinated the flowers, trees, and greenery of the local population, who now feel safe and secure. They believe Tu Zi, the spirit of insects, has graced them with his visit. The reason for the occurrence is unknown, as Tu Zi can be rather capricious, at least in all sorts of critters at will. Spooky trade goods. <laughs> Secret trade goods. Hey, why aren't... Oh, I don't have these guys to deal with the rebels. Oh. Oh. Boo. It's alright. The new generation. Over the years, our golden sage, Fax Isho the First, has shown a great interest in shaping our military, especially trained many of the army's bright young minds. Is this because he's disciplined? He's strict? I'm going to a cheaper armor reformer, cheaper commandant, or cheaper master recruiter. Let's go for a cheaper commandant that is of our culture. Look at that. Look at him. Look at that hat. Oh, what a what a great looking guy right there. Kobolds want to settle. Wait, they're leaving Phi-10? There's a cause for war. Apparently phi Ten's not treating them well enough. Yeah, you can settle for a price, though. <laughs> I need the money, man. Okay? Times are tough here. Times are tough. Don't be a hater. How did you move south so fast? I don't know. Go get him, though. You're a jerk. I'm coring that province. Can you not? Can you not stop me from coring the province, please? All right, you're gonna be brought back. You turn off the edict. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
You drill. You drill. What are we missing? The development. How are the major or er, the merchants feeling? Oh, they're feeling great actually. <laughs> they're feeling great right now. The merchants are really happy right now. <laughs> well, I definitely don't want to develop when I have plus ten to my development cost, ten percent. Okay, yep. I guess you're just gonna keep suppressing rebels. Can you even be a coming up? You don't have a fancy hat? No. Can I use God's commands live on stream? It's over? It's so over. That's right. That's right. Every run was actually just done with console commands. I've never done a single legitimate run in my life. Every time I go get more water, I'm actually just cheating. It's true. Exposed. Exposed in real time on stream. EU4 streamer cheating. Can you use privilege to compete agenda since you can't convert? Oh damn, that is an option, huh? Uh, which one is it? Is that the thing we can do? Now with freedom? No. 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 I'm not seeing it. Am I missing it? Wrong state? Oh, it's clergy. It's clergy. Sin, gives prestige, mission maintenance. Okay, well, it's still not here. Unless I'm missing it, which is possible. There it is. Boom. We're actually so good. We're actually so good. Yeah, I'll spend it to get the dwarves integrated. That's fine. So I think I just develop. I don't think I wait for the merchants. But I will summon the diet. No. No. Build a marketplace there, even though it's not the great place for it. Encourage development here. Frick. We were close. You think a man can do what Kong is tell him? Nay, it's beyond mortal kin. No, I was Knuff. Thank you very much. I was Knuff. I did it. I did the run. Thank you very much. I was very confused why I just got out of a war there. Okay, the Shunukorchi Outpost. Shunukorchi shows potential as a regional outpost, but it needs significant government investments before it can become the regional capital of the North. Many civil servants think it will be one day. Uh, becomes gold-scale kobold. Gain some um, development cost reductions and defensiveness increase. Possible number of buildings plus one. Gain two base production and lose 25 local autonomy. And now, we just have to have a party. That's a very expensive party. <laughs> Kobolds go crazy, apparently. You guys just drill. Keep drilling. We can build more troops. Ooh. We don't like malevolence. Malevolence is bad. That makes my already pretty disloyal vassal be even more disloyal. Oh, that's wonderful. Sure.
Why is this guy so much cheaper than this guy? Also, we haven't gotten radical reforms yet. Scammed. Actually scammed. You need to go back to rebel suppression. I keep putting him on drilling because I want to drill, but I can't do it. It's greedy. It is the big greed. I'm not going to spend money on building more troops. I need to do the party. <clears throat> A man did not do it. It was an elf. Damn, killing Sauron would have been like super easy then. Like, oh, no man can kill me. It's like, I'm not a man, I'm an elf. And just stab him. That's it. Legolas could just snipe him from like two miles away. Done. Easy. I fixed it. I solved the Lord of the Rings. Plot hole. Well, well, there you go. Nope. You said it. You said it. It was a hobbit. No, not Sauron. The f oh, dude, I'm, I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I meant the, uh... The Nazgul guy. The Witch King. The Witch King. The Witch King. That's what I meant. Not Sauron. My bad. Okay. I was thinking of the other dude in the scary outfit. Nerd card revoked. Made a mistake? L. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I messed up, okay? But I realized it. I, I brought it back. We brought it back. All right. Uh, be distracted by the party. Okay? It's fine. Magnificent Feast. Boom. Ballers time. Uh, from the expedition's report, it is clear that Balrus is caught in a mire of loneliness and grief. To pull him from it and persuade him to stay, we must assure that he wants for nothing physically, emotionally, or philosophically. To the best of our abilities, have we shaped our realm in the image of his words, forged friendship and alliances all across the continent, and received tribute of both gold and sustenance into the halls of Balk Hangfa Palace. Let us hope it is enough. The Return of Balrus. We have tried to find him for centuries. Walrus the Gold, bringer of songs, slayer of ignorance, wisest of masters, he who will return. Now we have not only found him, but convinced him to come back to us once more. We can finally have true guidance again. As Balrus flies over the realm, taking his new domain, fireworks and mesmerizing magical projectiles fill the air. A feast of epic proportions was raging underneath his visage. Days later, he is firmly nestled inside Balfanga Palace and begun his role of guiding the nation. Though Balrus does not wish to become the formal lord of our realm, his mere presence and the advice he offers from his abode in Balkanfa Palace will surely usher in a new era. His first point of order appears to be curtailing the power of the clergy, who, according to him, have allowed the meaning of his teachings to become distorted for their benefit over his thousand-year absence. May he never leave us again. All right, we lose one stability... We gain the search for Balor is completed until the end of the game. 10% morale of armies, 20% manpower in True Faith provinces. And we get Baller's figurehead until the end of the game, giving 2% missionary strength, plus one monthly splendor, minus 10% liberty, desire, and subjects, and plus one diplomatic free policies. May he never leave us again. And we unlock our stuff. <clears throat> Which we need lots of development, and there's a lot of reforming we need to do. And I need to own 20... F oh, clergy influence lower than 40? And we become a republic? Let's go. Huge. Uh, oh, this lowers clergy influence. Ooh, okay. So we've got to start nerfing the clergy a little bit. That gives them the most amount of influence. Okay, so we need to get rid of religious diplomats first. We're going to have to give the government capacity to somebody else. Okay, religious diplomats goes bye-bye. So as we do, we start recovering our crown land and nerfing the clergy. But I think we're going to wrap stream up there for today. Uh, tomorrow, we must expand more. I'm still not seeing a CB to destroy the command. The deep state government. The gnomes are going to show up. Yeah, I'm not seeing a thing to destroy the command. Uh, oh, we get even more missions? Oh, okay, sweet. Uh, but I do agree that we should be the Enshini Hegemon. So, I think our main goal now is to not fight the command. And instead focus on maybe trying to integrate this guy. It's 20 years. It's 9 Diplo a month, though. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to take Diplotech that entire time. But it's probably worth it. I'm going to start that right now, actually. We're going to start annexing Lenshin Hui. We're going to kill Fai Ten, Lui Yip, 
Bion Fang, Tian Lu, take it all for ourselves. Do you have your good ruler? No. No, I do not. We need this ruler to die. Or we need to just become a republic. Either one. It's going to make it 15% cheaper. Oh, that's true. It will make it cheaper once this ruler dies. Good point, good point. Wow, it, my light is really bright. Alrighty. Uh, so, yes. Thank you all for hanging out. Appreciate it. Hope you have enjoyed the Balrus finding. Now that we've found him, we got to do what he says. Could also focus, Diplo. Um, yes. In a couple months, we can actually switch to focus. Don't annex. You get new missions. Don't annex? But I want to annex them. But I wanna. Fine. Fine, 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 fine. We won't annex our vassal. What's the point of having vassals if you don't annex them? There is no point. There is none. It switched out of the category again when I'm doing raiding. I don't appreciate it when it does that. Uh, oh, actually, I should refresh to make sure that it's actually correct. And not telling me that people are streaming when they're not actually streaming. Just be patient. Who are you talking to? Come on. Me? Me? Be patient? Really? I don't know about that one. I don't know. We do have somebody playing Ambinar, though. So we'll go ahead and we'll raid them. Uh, they're playing as it says tigers i don't know which haramari they're playing as it is the raj themselves wow okay oh look at that they're beating up the command it's that easy it's actually that easy to beat up the command simply win win harder all right i'll be live again tomorrow uh same time same place same poem you style i don't know why i said that that didn't really work but uh, that is going to be it for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.